Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 2023 Pokemon Let's Go tournament. I'm your resident Pika enjoyer Trevaria, and I'll be on commentary for this race today. Uh, my Eevee enjoying counterpart for the day is Sheepia. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. Looking forward to this. That's great to hear. Uh, let's take a look at today's competitors before we start. From part one, with around two time of 30503, we have uh, Ergate who won his race against none other than three flat PB holder T-Pad. Uh, actually the number two seed coming to this round, so uh, his hopes are high, but his competition is fierce. From part two, with a round two time of 3.07.37, it's our double world record holder and shoe in for best time in the tournament, Etchy. He's been kind of busy cardboard clashing, but uh, yeah. You'll have to leave the TCG behind if he wants to guarantee his spot in the upper bracket final, that's for sure. And uh, last but not least, from part three, with around two time of 308.19, it's the notorious underdog head Bob. He's been placed for his growth in the last couple of weeks, but uh, yeah, due to some bad luck in round two, he only barely managed to qualify for the upper bracket. So will RNG be on his side today? Guess we'll find out, because the runners should be ready to start the race. Chipio, what, what do you think of the matchup today? It's uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, Ergote had a really good time in the first or in the second round. Um, Edgy, we, we know Edgy, uh, but Edgy has been talking a bit in the in the pre-race uh, uh, chat here like and and he just has no practice he was just focused on cardboard clash so he might be a bit rusty and head bob has been some had some really good times uh can, can do a lot better than shown previously so did, did any any of these three can win this absolutely and i feel like that's basically true for all three of the upper bracket races but uh yeah looks like we're off now uh for the reasons you said, this is going to be a very tight race. So we have two Pika runners today, since Head Bob switched to Pika. I believe he did that yeah. last round. Hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh, oh, there, will be, be there will be no Pika slander while I'm on the commentary uh, mic. I say this every time. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. Actually, choosing goal three. <laughs> Just like in his world record run in round one of the tournament. <laughs> this must mean that there'll be another world record. Yeah, and what I'm really expecting at this skill level of these runners is it's going to look very synchronized for a lot of this. Um, like, they're just such great runners. There's you will see a lot of overlap, people in the same fights, people on the same catches. Definitely it's going to be close throughout, especially in the late game, of course, because there can still be a lot of um, like variance in the early to mid game with all the catches, you know. You could see someone just barely scraping by with like minimum experience, minimum catches. And then someone else with an excellent catch count will of course be a little bit further behind in the race, like, from what it looks like. Yeah, we can see the difference, see if the 30 seconds are accurate or not. <laughs> well, in my PB attempts, I started calling it the 30 second lie. Because there's, like, so much more that goes into it. Oh, oh, oh definitely. That's, that's, like, one, one of the people who started with the 30 seconds it was just easier to explain to people yeah definitely it's a, it's a good very basic, easy to calculate like, like yeah it's oh, a good what's like, my, estimation what's, yeah what's my pace oh just like plus minus about 30 seconds easy to calculate all right so the runners about to catch 
their starters here. We want to pay special attention to head bobs and edgy's screen because you can tell whether Pikachu is neutral or not based on the CP value. I see. Let me let me see here. Twenty six for both of them, so neither have uh, a neutral Pikachu. Both will have. Nope. And head up with a little bit of trouble, <laughs> yeah. Turned a bit too hard. Immediately getting motion controlled on the first catch, that's not how you want to start your race here. It's like the last thing I did before my previous race was just practice catches in the forest to get the motion controls in. That's probably a good thing to do. Especially if you haven't played the game in a while, like Etchy. <laughs> Though he should really have the catches down by now. Yeah, I think he still has the muscle memory for them. <laughs> so, from what the runner said uh, before the race started, only Headbob will be checking his nature here. The other two do not have a prepared backup, so whatever they get, they'll try to deal with it. Yeah, also on purpose. It's not like... Yeah. Er Ergo was never going to make a backup. He was just, I, I'm just going to run whatever I get. I can handle it. Good confidence. But from a runner of his, uh, his quality, his stature, it's, I guess, deserved. So let's see what we get here for Headbob. Impish. That's not a... Okay, that seems to be not runnable, so he'll be loading the backup. Impish's minus special attack plus defense. I actually... Well, I keep saying this, but I think minus special attack is runnable for a tournament setting, just in general, even. Yeah, you need a little bit of extra experience to get to level 30 for JNJ3, uh, but it's way more manageable than minus attack. So, uh, well, Headbob will be taking that... 40 to 45 second penalty here for loading the backup. Yeah, and I think it's also because Headbob had the minus attack Pikachu in the round two that really screwed him over. I think he's just like, I'm not taking any chances with that. It will just like ruin my mood for the early game. And I mean, as someone who also did use the backup in his first round, I mean, I can, uh, I can just understand that for the tournament too. It's more than just what's the faster time. You you have to finish. I mean, I guess that is true, but since we are in the upper bracket, Headbob won't get eliminated today. Uh... Yeah, it is. It is a it is a penalty. But Headbob saying in chat he should have taken it probably. All right. Well, you'll have that forty to forty five seconds, like I said. Uh, to claw back now uh, on the other two runners, who I guess they could have bad starters. Uh, we'll see on the Radita fight for Echi and on the first Caterpie fight in Forest for Ergate. Yeah, and already somewhat on the rival fight here. At least to see if it's minus attack. Yeah. Minus attack plus attack. And and, and, and those 40 seconds, they're just like one bad Carolone fight. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, there's so much in the game that can just, based on RNG, lose you so much time. The Archer Double, Carolyn. Uh... Yeah, and I've been noticing it lately with more of my runs. I've been like focusing more on like where am I losing time? And just like breakouts can lose so much time. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Ergate definitely doesn't have plus attack here. Echi may have plus special attack, I guess we'll see on the level up. Could have low rolled there to miss the three shot. Yeah, so it's just one uh, fight difference, basically, for Headbob getting the backup. Yeah, it's not that much. It's not an insta-lose, obviously. Uh, 
also because it just makes the run safer now, because you're not that dependent on uh, good experience. Obviously, you always lack good experience, but you're still gonna get to JJ3 at level 29 now, whereas mm -hmm. that could really lose you some time with minor special attack. Ergate now in the red tough fight doesn't mean much to him. But it will for Echi, so we get to see what his Pika stats are here in a second. For oh, neutral Pikachu, we want to see 16 attack, 15 special attack here on the level up. Without the AVs. That is, uh, what's that minus attack? <laughs> but with an AV, so that's an interesting mm. Pika. Because I saw, yeah. I, yeah, I think it was 15 attack, right? Yeah, Actually. and a plus, and a plus two. So he's minus attack, but has the at least one characteristic. AV. Yeah, so that could definitely compensate for it a little bit. Like he may have an easier time hitting the range on Geo One if he doesn't hit thirty until then. But that is that is the one thing that I personally would load the backup over minus attack. Pikachu, so... And also, he, he basically uh, saw this coming. Because before the race started, he said he has to get a minus attack today, basically. Yeah, he, he cursed himself with that. <laughs> and now Ergo in the forest on the Caterpie. I don't know what EV stacks look like at level 6. 15, 14 for neutral. Okay, so neutral, yeah, neutral attack, neutral social attack, didn't see much of the other stats. He was very fast, I think it was 17 speed, so... Yeah, that's uh, definitely plus speed then. Which is and good. I think, I think it was minus special defense. I take your oh, word wow. for it, I didn't, I didn't see the other stats. Uh... We have a slot winner in chat. Ooh, that's hype. <laughs> Ergote joining the Pika crowd, catching a Pika. Slightly later than the others, but... <laughs> oh, breakout. Fast catch, fast breakout. That's not great. He didn't manage to hit the circle there. Makes the catch... Not good. <laughs> Actually, meanwhile, on the Pidgey fight, obviously, you can one-shot it with Thundershock. That's what we love to see in Pika version. Don't have to worry about sand attack misses. Though I guess Ergo will be able to choose you now that he caught the early Pikachu. Yeah, I, I always do that. Yeah. So you won't have to worry about it either. Uh, yeah, and you I can just keep the, keep the second controller out. Yeah, if you don't deposit the Pikachu. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I keep it out for at least like the first catch. Hmm. Okay. To get the so. two, two double catches. Actually looking for bugs right now. He's a Caterpie. Otters also spawn after the lore. Question is, will Etchi go for that? Because on the one hand, you definitely want that Oddish. But on the other hand, you might want to get the level 9 Oddish and Rat 2 instead. Yeah, I get the two higher levels. And yeah, Ergo take on for the 2C PG fight. Yeah, you don't okay. you don't want to see that uh, sand attack. No, he definitely don't. So actually is going for the Oddish here. Probably he, he was like halfway past it and then spotted the glowing weedle. Glowing weedle will make it so that Oddish will definitely at least hit level eight. Oh, frick on hop up screen, let's go. Uh you at least get to level 8, which already makes the Brock fight so much nicer. And if you maybe on top of that catch something on Route 2, like the Radata, then you'll still get that level 9. You know. Quick breakout. Uh, 
uh, ergo they did deposit the Pikachu. Yeah. That's usually what I do when I get early Pika, just deposit it so you get rid of it. Even though you don't then have to do the 1C catch with the bug again. Another breakout! He didn't... I, I don't think he rests, which... Oh, that's nope. gonna be another, another breakout for Ergo. Not hitting the circle. Okay, gets the catch. This wouldn't happen to me. <laughs> like, getting the catch there, not, not hitting the circle, because that's a very me thing, but... Yeah, sometimes you have that, uh... Imagine another getting frick. an excellent... Oh, another Frick! Ergo and Frick, yes. Let's see if it stays in for him. It's an accident, so it really should stay in. There we go. Finally some... Uh... Balance. Yeah, three three breakouts in forest would have been just painful. Yeah, that would be so painful. Like, Adult is caught up at that point, basically. Yeah. I mean, Ergo will probably be ahead in catches now for some time since he did get both the Pika that the other two runners don't have access to and the Frick. Yeah, and I think that's like, like Pikachu only had to walk from the forest down to Route 1, where the Eevee had to walk all the way from Pokemon Road to Route 1. So, I mean, that's saying something, right? Probably. Alright, really let's see if anyone goes for... Sorry, yeah. All right, see, looks like she's going to go for a glowing Pidgey here. Good uh, catch for experience. Um, Head pop going for a route to Caterpie, looks like. Yeah. Probably didn't see one in forest. Yeah, you, we saw him looking, but... Also, I don't see... Yeah. Uh... I don't see an auto yet on his tracker. He he did see one in the forest, but may have to reset the route then. Or is there? I I think there may be an auto right next to it. Was I looking at something else? Anyway, actually did manage to get level nine for sure on the auto. Yeah, that's another threat there, but... Oh, accidentally dismissed the support trainer. Can we summon it in the catch? Glowing Oddish too, so that will be really good for experience. That's a nice early so uh, cycle. Oof. I could take stepping on a Metapod on the way out of the forest. Or did that Metapod step on him? <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> That's the, a funny thought. Debatable. <laughs> debatable. <laughs> now I imagine a metapod falling down from like a tree branch Ooh. or something. Going for the glowing reds. Really nice spawn. Yeah. My favorite rat to, rat to spawn to uh, round out my experience. Has been fairly popular all across the tournament because you can also then catch Route 10 Radicate if you see it, which is another nice high EXP uh, catch. Yeah, or or you catch Route 10 Radicate and then mention Redata. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in theory, that is also possible, yes. You can just go for the Radicate and, and like not catch the Radata beforehand. So, uh, Ergotase Bulbasaur has already gained three levels, which makes me think he may keep it and evolve it. Yeah, yeah. instead of the Bell Sprout. Second he stage doesn't... is marked on the tracker for Ergotase, so. Looks like that's what he'll be doing. Yeah, basically, better Bell Sprouts just evolves earlier. I 
Actually, meanwhile, already finishing up Brock. Uh, Bob entering Pewter. On the same catch count as Etchy, so that's where the. Where the load the of the backup save yeah. still comes in, of course. I'm actually getting the Battlefree Evo of a Brock experience, which is also nice. Means that he'll be able to deposit the Battlefree before going down to the bottom floor of Mount Moon. Didn't see if. Wait, let, let me check the tracker if he maybe already got the Beedrill as well. No. So Beedrill still has to evolve. Depending on, on how close it is to the level up, he will either get that just from the two fights he still has left to do, or from one of the extra catches you can get on Route 3, of course. Alright, both Hapop and Arcte on Brock. Obviously it's gonna be a little bit faster for Hapop since uh, Oddish just makes it a two turn. Unless it gets flinched by Onyx or has bad special attack. Yeah, Eevee needs a few more turns. But of course will be able to get that time back just by having amazing type coverage where Pika is forced to do 2c fights later in the run. Yeah, you will we'll see that Ordish again. Eevee is a bit more rounded out. Good coverage. Alright, Etchy now entering Route 3. We'll be looking for two more common extra catches that can spawn here, Mankey and Sandshrew. Not so far, just the rats. Picking up the lure in the bushes. And nothing here either. Uh, Hapop also bought the X defense, so isn't going for safe shopping where you buy an extra burn here and drop the X defense. The X defense that Hapop bought will be used on the final gym trainer, or the final gym fight, gym leader fight, that's where I was going. <laughs> so it'll stay in his bag for quite some time. Etchy, meanwhile, buying a Magikarp. Fastest catch of the run. Yes, I'm, I'm afraid I'll, I'll... <laughs> for Gavin and Chad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I've had German in school, but my German was so awful. <laughs> we would need to I get. Th yeah. I think it would be best for everyone if I don't try to attempt that. And I, I have had very little exposure to Dutch myself. I have some friends who speak the language. Oh, you see icons for Ergate. Nice optional catch for Eevee version. It'd be pretty easy. Okay. We had just a tad too long to get the excellent catch there. Yeah, waiting on the attack cycle and then... But since he was going into it with just one controller... Probably didn't expect too much experience there. 
but uh, still, getting the excellent both makes the catch safer and makes the deal more experienced, so would have liked to go for that. Yeah, and the good thing about the Akans is that uh, Magikarp will now go to the box, so that's one less deposit, basically. True, with a like it's the same amount of deposits as if he hadn't caught it, but he has one more catch. So. Yeah, exactly. Looks like actually didn't manage to evolve the Kakuna in time, so that will have to stay in the party. But uh, he got to the ladder with plenty of time to spare for a potential double moonstone respawn. Just to, to explain that one more time. Hidden items in this game have a 50% chance of respawning every time the date on the Switch console changes. So runners usually set up their clock before the race uh, to roll over just after they hit this room in Mamun that Edgy is in right now. So that moonstone that he just picked up has a chance to respawn. The clock should roll over around the 25 minute mark here for Edgy. And all he has yeah. to do, yeah, all he has to do is not be just running around, but instead be in a catch or in a menu, because uh, otherwise the respawn can't happen. Yeah, even picking up Moonstone is enough of a menu that it can respawn, which is always a funny. It happened to uh, Attic at first and also happened to uh, Thomas Patrick recently, t -Pet. Oh, really? That's, so you can... Yeah, that's, you, can, you can just, you like, can... keep spamming A and it, you <laughs> picked up the Moonstone. You picked up Moonstone. <laughs> that's funny. I, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very tight timing, of course, but... Yeah. I guess I should try that one, uh, like, sometime when I get there with very little time to spare. And if there's nothing I want to catch immediately spawning. Okay, help up actually swapping Pikachu to the front, doing it Eevee style. Where he does the menu before he fights the Buzzsprout trainer. And is gonna fight the trainer now with Pikachu instead of with Oddish, what uh, Echi did. Probably still gonna be the same amount of turns. I don't think Pikachu has a way of, of uh, one shotting this bus crowd. Maybe it could be an, an Eevee brain moment, yes. Uh, responding to Phoenix in chat. Since he did start out running Eevee for the tournament in the round one race. Shouldn't be too bad. He'll probably... He may struggle a bit with the sand shoe unless he gets a, 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 a headbutt flinch. Usually like yeah, to I get mean, the... Yeah. Oh. You can just go in and like go down the stairs and get more EXP. Yeah. Does get a 1% Clefairy spawn on the upper level here though, which is nice to see. Sadly, oof, misses the... Gets trapped by the attack and misses the first throw, so... We'll be losing out on a little bit of experience here. Oh, Onyx spawn for Etchy and he does go for it. Brave. Let's see. But he couldn't dodge it anyway, so... No, uh, he was already passed. He went back for oh, it. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Alright, so... Usually you go for like a nice here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the odds are for this. They are okay-ish. With the double great ball and the Ras. Yeah, gets the catch. There we go. Yeah, I don't have the, the catch uh, thingy open. Uh, too many windows open already for commentating. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Etchy didn't get the fairy yet, right? Yeah, it didn't. So that's why he had to go back for the Onyx. Really needs some extra catches here for experience. Ooh, nice glowing, glowing Paris for Head Bob. Very nice, goes for the first cycle throw there. Looks like Ergotay got the double moonstone. I, I didn't actually see if Etchy got it. It's even if you get there in time, like I said, it's just a 50 50.
Actually, you know, on the drowsy grunt, uh, this drowsy is very annoying. It has confusion, which can obviously confuse you, and it also has hypnosis, so it can put you to sleep, wasting you precious time. And there we go. That's the sleep I cursed it. I'm sorry, Etchi. I didn't mean yeah, to. Yeah, as, as an Eevee runner, I, I've never seen this happen. Yeah, so you just Eevee click head Bob and, and it's head Bob and it's dead. <laughs> yeah, uh, Eevee usually or definitely Oko's at level 15 and even at level 14, that's a favorable range usually. Oh, Clefable no. for Ergo doesn't go no. for it. Not going for the triple moonstone strats. I'm actually getting an Undorge Clefairy now. Level 9. That's a good level. Well, it'll still get him to level 15 in time, I think. Alright, head bob should be finished now in the bottom floor. We'll do a deposit here. To get rid of everything. Actually, I think he... Should have maybe waited for the Bulbasaur to hit one more level here. Yeah, I don't know like what's closer to the next level there. Yeah, I, I didn't see what, like, how far away the Bulbasaur was from. Yeah, the because level if, it's like, wanna, if it's like wanna... the Cle Clefairy, also close to. And you you yeah. really don't want that to uh, like getting a move. I think Ivysaur is like uh, no, no. doesn't learn immediately. Yeah, I had but oof, another Clefable this time for Edgy doesn't go for it. <laughs> Everybody leaving Clefable behind. So Hedbo just got poisoned by a Sentry because he doesn't he didn't go into it with Oddish. He doesn't get a, mm -hmm. a one shot there. And this Sentry is super annoying for multiple reasons. One. It can use sand attack, which makes you miss your moves. And then, of course, it also has poison sting. And in my experience, poison sting has like a 80% chance to poison you, which isn't actually what's in the code, but it feels like it. And that yeah, is also sand, what happens. Sand, to sand attack feels like 50% to hit. Yeah. <laughs> so he should probably heal that poison because it's gonna. Well, you can't impact. get hypnosis now. That is true, I guess. Maybe he's waiting for that. Depending on... Well, I guess what he could do is, if, if the Bulbasaur is very close to evolving, he could just do this fight and the next, where it should be a one-turn fight each. And then combine depositing the... Oh, not quite. Combine depositing the Bulbasaur with healing the poison. So these ticks add up across all of the fights here in Emma Both in terms of time and in terms of damage. So he get at least another two ticks on the on the super nerd fight. Oof, already takes stopping. And yet another encounter that spawned right as he walked past. Chansey! Oh god, no! <laughs> and Lourdes. Not going for it. Everybody ignoring the pink spawns here today. <laughs> That's not going to be popular with the chat. <laughs> but I guess they could all still get chances on that six. Yeah. Or route five, even better. <laughs> <laughs> like walking down while having to walk back up again. Jump down That's the ledges. Worse. Of course, when you're walking up and you see the Route 5 Chansey. <laughs> I guess in, in that instance, you definitely don't go for it. <laughs> right. Etchy and JNJ1 here. Uh, should have an easy enough time with it since it's just going to be using Thundershock, so it's not going to be impacted by minus attack. The thing is, I just remember that he has minus attack, so if he goes into Misty at level 15, which it looks like he will, I don't think that Ekans and uh, Goldeen experience... Maybe. Actually, I think he might level up from the Psyduck, so uh, at level 16, the range to knock out the Starmie is much better. But I don't think it will be good with minus attack either way.
Well, actually, already wrote in chat that he may regret not going for the Clefable. So I guess we'll see. Maybe he'll get something on Route 3 to definitely get him to 16 for Starmie. I think he should be fine. Doesn't go for the PP up, so... Oh. Runs right into a manky. <laughs> Optimal. Goes for, yeah, goes for 2C here for the experience for the player. Gets a great, but it should still be fine, I think. Should definitely get level 16 from Goldino or Sadak now. Meanwhile, our other two runners on JJ now. Head up still Ergo. one catch down. Sorry, yes. Ergo getting the flinch, but not uh, no quite on the coughing. Yes, yeah, so you have to be at a decent level or uh, just that decent, decently high attack to get a good range for that coughing with headbutt uh, on EB. So yeah, I like remember at least like three, half three of the AV, time. 3 AV or something like that. Yeah. I remember when I was running EV, I would go for actions like at least half of the time. So maybe I just had bad luck with my EVs, I don't know. And now Edgy is learning a move in yes. the Pokemon Center. Zippy Zap. What does Zippy Zap do? You're the Pika <laughs> runner. Well, like Zippy Zap is the one special move that Pikachu gets from this move tutor. Uh, Only like, one? Yeah, just the one in, in this <laughs> on this move tutor. It's a 50 power, 50 base power, physical uh electric type moves that always crits and also has a priority of plus two so will always add speed just general moves and also add speed quick attack and sucker punch which is very important or at least a little bit important later <laughs> sadly doesn't add speed protect or fake out but what can we do it's a very strong move uh and also the reason why minus attack is so bad because this is the move that pika will be relying on for the next hour or so. Yeah, meanwhile, Ergote is now learning three moves on Eevee. We have a... Uh, and and uh, they're, they're, they're like for the three Gen 1 evolutions. Evolutions. So we have a water move, Bouncy Bubble. It's a 90 power special uh, attack move uh, that's heals yourself for 50% of the damage you deal. So like water, Giga Drain. On the Eevee, that's level 15, so already good. It learns Buzzy Buzz, a 90 power special attack uh, electric move uh, that always paralyzes. And uh, Sisley Slide, a 90 power physical fire move that will always burn and we will see all of these use moves used um Just all of them have their uses let's see oh actually misses the range that's unfortunate but it was fine Seems yeah didn't pretty... get burned or yeah i think if i saw his attack correctly on level up that should have been a 10 and 16 range for for him I think that's the lowest it can be at level 16, at least for neutral, though he isn't. Um, kind of unfortunate to miss a favorable range. And sadly, Pikachu obviously doesn't have access to Bouncy Bubbles, so won't be able to heal itself on the upcoming Nugget Bridge section. Which means that Achi will either just have to live with the yellow HP or will have to heal on the central fight with the 2C strat. The Ergote and Headbob both on Misty right now. Uh, Eevee usually doesn't get the one shot on Starmie unless, unless it has extremely high special attack. Whereas it usually is at least a range for Pikachu. Yeah, Hebop gets it with the neutral Pika. Oh, burn for Ergo, that is unfortunate. We'll have to hear that 
before the river fight. Even though I think his HP may have been fine without the burn. Yeah, wouldn't have needed to heal without the burn. Oh, right, she's modest. I actually didn't I actually didn't catch that. Just read that from Aspect and chat. Just noticed the minus attack. Yeah, they uh, people pe people in chat figuring this stuff out for us. Really nice. Thanks, chat. <laughs> and people say Twitch chat is like useless. I would never say that. Oh, actually, also got poisoned on level one there. Uh, the Irish can poison you. So, uh... Again, as an EV runner, I don't have that experience. Unless you're minus attack, I think. That can... You can fail to knock out the Irish, but I'm not sure about that. Uh... A Pika, it's... You always have a chance. If you don't get the headbutt flinch, Oddish can just go for poison powder and hit it. And then that's the poison. There are two more. I think actually just healed from the menu. There are two more opportunities to get poisons on Nugget Bridge for Pika at least. If you do the 1C Sandshrew fight, which it looks like actually will be doing, that can again go for. Uh, what is it? Got it again. Poison stink? Poison stink. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and then also the coughing has smog, I believe it's is its poisoning move, so I have once managed to get poisoned by all three on the same attempt. <laughs> it doesn't feel great. <laughs> Yeah, for Eevee, all of these are just one hits. No risk actually, at all. Actually, going into this fight 1C with just Oddish. Interesting. Interesting strat. Doesn't want to get poisoned again. Yeah. Just swapped Oddish into the front and then swapped it back. Interesting, interesting. Gets faked up by me out. That's just annoying time. There's nothing you can do. You can randomly decide to go for fake out or not. And there's a second me out later in Rock Tunnel where uh, Eevee will use that first turn to set up an next special attack, but Pikachu just wants to go. So Pikachu really doesn't appreciate getting faked out again. <laughs> Actually now approaching the end of the bridge, we'll have to go for a two-turn knockout of the coughing. No way, he has a good range. Or as if he's up one, one hit KO at level 17 with minus attack. Yeah, this mysterious stranger at the end of the bridge. Oh, oh no. What a twist. He's Team Rockert. No one could ever have seen it coming. And the police is busy with a break in. So they can't help, but. Definitely I mean, maybe, not connected. Maybe... No, no. <laughs> Wait, is the Nugget Bridge thing just the front that Team Rocket set up so that they could rob everyone in Cerulean <laughs> while everyone was busy with the Nugget Bridge challenge? Yeah, and, and, and on the other side, they can recruit the people who actually managed to get through. So it's like a, a pretty smart scheme, you know? <laughs> I 
Alright. Will we see Echi go for Noxkip? Yes, we will. Flawless execution. And there we quickly saw the first skip, trainer skip of the... Trainer vision in this game is something, sometimes more of a suggestion than an actual thing. Argentina also finished with the Rocket Grunt. Uh, there are two more extra catches on R25 that Argentina can get, can get here. Venonat and Meowth. Uh, Meowth, there it is. Uh, is a version exclusive? Oh yeah, should probably go for that. I've never seen this happen. In, in all of my runs, I've never yeah. had both of them spawn. I think this happened once in like, I don't know how many. 200 EV runs for me. <laughs> That's a high number. It wasn't 200, but it's a very rare occurrence that both uh, useful spawns on Route 25 spawn. Should probably now also go for the Venonat since he's already up there. Yeah, I would at this point. And then he can deposit with the Ivysaur. Actually, yeah, that, that's working out really well for Ergate. But meanwhile, I just saw two Pidgeys on R25, so we'll just be continuing onward to Bill. And will we see the mythical Squirtle? I doubt it. Maybe we'll see it on the way back for Etchy. Probably like the rarest Pokemon we can see. Yeah, we've seen it exactly once so far this tournament when Dynam just ignored it. On his round two race. <laughs> yeah, because what he he, di he didn't know the tech cycles. Was that the justification? It just didn't make sense, I think, in the context of the run. All right, Detect then. Detective Pikachu on edgy screen. And the headphone has yeah. a talking Pokemon. What's happening in this game? Finds the tiny, subtle hole in the wall that no one would ever notice without Detective Pikachu. And hey, there's like a guy in black dress. <laughs> just outside there. Hmm. Definitely doesn't have anything to do with it. Anyway, uh, actually not going down Route 5, gonna... Not going gonna... back up for that Growlithe. No, not worth it. Just gonna talk to the rival here. The rival will pull out some revives out of Etchy's hair or whatever. Yeah, just a PG-13 scene. Oh, that's the Squirtle! That's the Squirtle on the other side of yeah. the hatch! That's so cursed for Headbomb! I We've seen a Spurtle. <laughs> we this red Adbob's uh, friend is blessed. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> why Hub, why didn't you go for that? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can run back for that, so. <laughs> No, that's no way. I know. Slightly out of range. Slightly. Sad times. We'll have to go to C from Island now to get a squirtle. Another detective Pikachu. Yes. And the lesser known detective EV is gonna follow in about 30 seconds here. 
Meanwhile, Echi should be coming out to Route 6, which is a very important catching section for Pikachu specifically. Because Pikachu is looking for Growlithe and or Abra. I thought already getting an Abra on Route 5. Well, that's not quite as useful. Because Pikachu needs a chance oh, Route 6. Chancy. No way is he gonna he's not gonna ignore that. He has to go for it. <laughs> what is going on today? Okay, actually going for no going for the chancy first, yeah, okay. There we go. Let's do it. This is pretty a pretty bad catch. But uh He's gone for this before, he knows what he's doing. Not even glowing, like Yeah, even imagine not it? being level twenty five for Level three. <laughs> Alright. Let's see the let's see the catch here. No, gets the breakout. Doesn't even rise, okay. Just goes for another excellence. Yes, there we go. Okay. Still gets a nice eighteen hundred experience. Sixteen hundred yeah. experience, sorry. Uh Gets Pikachu to level 20, so it's definitely a good catch. Would have liked not to get the breakout, but, you know. We'll take what we can get at this point. After the runners ignore two cliff tables And a chance to see Mamun. And a Squirtle. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> but now he's on a, on, on a, on a chance he catch chain. Ah, he's ruining the catch chain. I don't think you can be on a, on a Chansey catch you, you can. You can. Yes? Yeah. Because Chansey is the rare spot. Oh, <laughs> headbutt getting an early Abra. You love to see it. Perfect. The best, best thing to get. Yeah. It, you like... cannot. Send, yeah, Sandy just... Sorry that, that I'm interrupting. The chat. Sandy just saying in chat, uh, you can't be on a catch chain for rare spawns. So everything that spawns at 0.5%, uh, like the candle starters and the Chansey, cannot be on a catch chain. I mean, yeah, or like Alec says, the chain exists, but you don't get increased spawns. Yeah, and Abra is just, just the best, like the best catch in the game. It's like an optional, it's not very, uh, it's it's somewhat rare. You, you definitely don't see it every run. But, it like, it's it's just so quick. Two extra Pokemon, very quick. Yeah, and also, Pika likes to use that in battle. If it can get it to evolve. Okay, I think... No, Headbub already has a rat. Otherwise, the rat 6 rat is a decent enough catch. If you... Oh, still catches it. Did he forget that he already has it? Wait, but did he already have it or did he just mark it beforehand? I think he marked it already. All right. A little bit of confusion here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, the... the number went up by one. So yeah, Rat 6 uh, is an okay spot to catch a rat. You ideally want to catch it one rat later or one catching section later on Rat 10 because then it will be one level of evolving and here it will be four levels off. So now Hypop could theoretically just deposit the rat and catch Eradicate later or he can keep it for four levels and evolve it. Probably wants to catch something else though, like yeah, there we go, Jigglypuff. That should probably get the Abra to evolve. If you can get an excellent here. Oh no, just floated, floated away. Yeah. Everyone hates the Jigglypuff. Also gets a breakout, but at least he can... Oh no, Ergote hitting the Vermilion Skip. Well, the good thing is that uh, this is always a one-shot for Eevee. You can just sissy slide this uh, bed sprout and you can bounce above the, the um, Charmander on the other one. But yeah, ideally you want to walk in the center, right between the two trainers, and that will allow you to skip them both. I'm say viewing a little bit too far to the right, sadly. Yeah, let's see how... Uh... Okay, help up. Okay, yeah, help up going for a Pidgey because he didn't get the Abra Evo here.
There we go. That'll make Abra evolve. And now I can use it as the partner of Pokemon for the next three fights. This is actually the slightly better option compared to Growlithe. Because uh, it just has better special attack as a Kadabra. Even though it has a slightly weaker move in Psybeam compared to uh, Flamethrower for Growlithe. It, yeah, but high, higher stats. Yeah, just Kadabra has amazing special attack for level 16 at that point, or level 18. Uh, did neither of the Pika runners get Growlithe? I don't think. I saw it. Wait, let me check. Etchy has it marked. Etchy has it marked. Okay, good. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised because... Head up going for... Okay, there we go. A little bit of a stutter step. Vermillion skip. Takes it safe, but gets it done. But because Etchy is pretty high level here, level 21, still going for a 1C fight on... The rival. Good crit. Good sippy sip crit. <laughs> but I'm not sure if that was a joke from you, sheep. <laughs> Just wanted to clarify. I I I I am aware. Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> Uh, it's based on speed in Gen 1, I believe. So <laughs> it's very fast. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Incredible how he keeps getting crits with if he's out. Sure, he's hacking. Yeah, that, that's how you get the world record, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the difference. Real skill issue. Yeah, good times crits. Right, Echi now has already collected shot down Ergote on the rival fights. Also doing a 2C with full picks. Probably means that he's not certain he'll outspeed the Pidgeotto. Because if you have Bell right here and he don't outspeed the Pidgeotto with the uh, EV, the Pidgeotto likes to nuke the Bell with wing attack. Which is kind of annoying. Uh, he, he's plus speed. And he doesn't have a bell sprout. He doesn't have the bell sprout. Yeah, I just remembered. He he got the Bulbasaur, Ivysaur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just makes more sense. Short term memory. Oh well. All right. Actually, now on the way out of town, we'll have to hit the Vermilion Skip. You know, do it again. All right. There we go. He's another puppy on the way up, but of course he did get one, and that cat pop. No, Abra. That's what you're really hoping for then. True, true, but... If it's just the two catches that you're after, you can still get Abra on Route 7 and 8. And since the unlord Abra on Route 6 on the way back would never evolve in time to be useful for Route 9, it's not that big yeah. of a deal to not see it on the way back. Yeah, it would just be for catches. Yeah, definitely. But then you'd also have to carry it probably onto Route 10 and it'd, it'd get a bunch of extra levels that you don't necessarily want it to get. Yeah, all of these runners are pretty high with their plant catches. Apple on 57, Ergote on 54, and Edge on 55 plant catches. So they, they do have like their extra things. Uh, already yeah i mean we've seen argo get uh ekans venonat and meowth so that's three <laughs> optional catches actually obviously got the onyx and the chansey and uh have got the abra so everyone's gotten at least one yeah and, 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 and the Mankey and the centru right both of them yeah oh, i'm not looking at the tracker <laughs> Alright, Agate won't have to worry about the Vermillion Skipper on the way out. You can just hug the right side here. Oh, 
And because the Growlithe didn't hit level 18 for Edgy, both this Gloom and the upcoming Sandshrew can be a range for the Growlithe. Does get the one shot here, so that should mean that the special attack is high enough to at least also guarantee a, a good range for the Sandshrew. And let me tell you, if you don't one shot that Sandshrew, it can be so annoying because it has Sand Attack one more time and it also has Dig. And that Dig does a lot of damage to both Pikachu and Growler. So you really want to be able to, to knock it out in one turn. Should be able to get it though, let's see. We'll use an X special attack on Growlithe. And there comes the flamethrower. Perfect, gets the one shot, that's what we love to see. Did Ergate already menu? Because if I recall correctly, Eevee does the menu before this fight. It doesn't really matter too much. Mostly okay. if you need to heal, you do it beforehand. Yeah, okay, okay, that makes sense. So let's see if Helpup can also get the second Vermillion skip here. Perfect, gets it. On the way back. Many people say that it's a little easier on the way back because you can align with the tiles in Vermillion. Uh, I personally actually find it harder for some reason. I can never keep that direction that I set with the tiles and then I still hit it sometimes. Oh, I, I, I do find it easier. Ooh, Krabby. Nice extra catch. Yeah, I'm not... 10 we're looking for. Oof. Last second jump from the crappy video. You made it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is a weird set of spawns for HES. I thought of getting another Abra on Rod 5 on the way back. <laughs> um, yeah, you want to see the Nidorans, Spiro, and Krabby on Rod 10. You can also catch a Radata if you don't have it yet. This is where oh. Radata starts Radicate. to be at a. Yeah, or Radicate. This is where Rattata starts to be at a level where uh, it evolves within one level. I actually just got a Krabby and a Spiro, and then I think I saw a Fero, which you don't want to catch. Because it's just a rough catch. And Spiro should be right there. Yeah, and it flies around, and it's big. Like, you can't really aim for the circle. There are a lot of reasons why you don't... Uh... Alright, Headbub is now on the first fight of Route 9 with Kadabra instead of Growlithe. And Kadabra, doesn't matter what level it is, the side beam is always guaranteed, both for Gloom and for Sandshrew. So, if you have Kadabra and Pika version, you don't have to worry about these fights at all. Yeah, we saw Ergote with the... Uh... Oh. Won't see. Okay. Okay, that's a very bad Route 10 start for Ergo. Getting two eradicates of Fero. And then just the Nidoran may, I mean, we're actually going for Nidorina now. Uh, did I actually get another Nidor yet? Because just the Nidorina is kind of bad. The Pika version wants to get one of the Nidos to evolve into its final stage and use as a partner Pokemon. And usually you'd like that to be Nidor King. That doesn't seem to have spawned yet. So the oh, three eradicates for Ergo. Can go for the glowing one now, though. And then he caught the Nidorina. Do you think this will be a lure moment for Ergo or go down to the fight? And yeah, I mean, he can just respawn. wait for the, the fourth spawn that will now spawn instead of eradicate that he's catching, right? But after that, he might want to just lure a pal. I think that's slightly faster than using the cutscene. Kind of depends on what strategy he was going for. Like in Eevee, I think you'd usually want to want to see the next fight, so you kind of want oh, to yeah. have high experience. 
So maybe, you know, if you just do the fight to reset the route, then you might have a harder time with it because you're lower experience. That's the benefit of being able to lure and uh, repel and lure to reset the Yeah, catches. at like, like, at my experience, like at level 24 with EV, like you can just uh, double headbutt uh, the red and it makes the fight faster. Yeah. Actually, you would probably also go for a 1C strat here if you can get the experience. Uh, where you just head button to double kick or head button to thunderbolt depending on your level and your stats actually has minus attack so probably will only go for it if you can head button to thunderbolt and there's the repel that's in the okay. mail Oof, hits the fuel though <laughs> unfortunate luckily he already evolved it so it gets the um faster intro animation to the catch okay ergo's just having a time with the spawns He's got this bureau here. I don't think he has one yet. And a Krabby. Okay, there we go. So I'm pretty sure Etchy will use this Nidoran male now as his partner. Uh, we did catch the Nidorina beforehand, but Nidorina won't even have Crunch. And using Thrash with Nidorina sounds like an or with Nidor Queen sounds like a nightmare. So even though this Nidoran male will be a little low in experience. It's probably still the better option to go with that as his partner Pokemon for this next section of the run. At Bob now also getting to Rattan and immediately stepping into a Nidoran female. <laughs> Definitely a good uh, catch to get here though. And yeah, like I said, Etchi going for the 1C Radicate fight. I'm expecting Ergote to go for the Nidorina that just spawns. Because he does have the double Moonstone, and he didn't get a Jigglypuff. Yeah, then it's probably a good idea, both for experience and because you can evolve it into Nidder Queen. It isn't ideal, the best spawn to evolve into, oh, with the Moonstone, of course, is the Jigglypuff, but since he didn't get that, and there's no guarantee that he'll get it on Route 7 or 8, just getting something that is evolved from Moonstone here, and then evolving it is probably the best strategy. Oh, Nidor Queen gets Body Slam on Eva. Okay. Thank you, Sandy, for <laughs> telling me. Telling the chat. That was a low roll for Edgy, I think. I'm not sure how this range is with minus attack, but he had to three hit to the uh, Redicate. What did he go for? Headbutt into... Headbutt. Double, triple headbutt. Yeah, okay, I see. Well... Like, Depending the first on one level. was like... The first one was like... G getting into the, like, the, the orangey-yellow. Strange. Like, 50% and then a low roll. Yeah, unfortunate. Probably would have been safer to go for, like, Thunderbolt, but... I would also go for the second headbutt if I see the first one. Not radicate into yellow, so I, I understand the decision. Also picks up the backup Great Balls here on the way into Rock Tunnel. And Headbub also using the Repel Lure strats. And What's up getting... with the Radicates today? <laughs> Terrible Rock Tunnel spawns, oh no. Headbub getting absolutely trolled. Yeah, Headbub missing uh, Nidoran Mill. Yeah, also he didn't, does see, have... didn't see a Krabby, or, yeah. so... He does have the Nidoran female. Because he already repelled Lord, I kind of... don't think he'll go back again. And Nidor Queen strats are also... good. Right? They're not good as good enough. as Nidor King strats, but you can just... Oh, actually getting a glowing Graveler. You have to see it. Uh... It's tiny. <laughs> Doesn't look tiny. But yeah, he'll uh, probably just use the Queen Strat. Double Thunderbolt for Headbutt. Uh, head, headbutt. <laughs> Excuse me. I was thinking about Headbutt. To use in the first turn. Because he's... Yeah. 
only level 21 now hitting 22 from the fight experience yeah probably let's... wouldn't have been enough damage Let's ask Headbob to change his name <laughs> because it's just like so too confusing for us commentators. <laughs> well, Ergate also getting an instant graveler, not glowing, but still a nice catch. Don't know what his party situation is right now, if he even wants the experience, but of course, you take the catch if you see it. However, there is one potentially even, or probably even more, important catch in Rock Tunnel that all of our runners want to see. And that is not Cubone, even though Headbob is going for that now, but Rhyhorn, the first Pokemon that you can ride that also increases your movement speed. And you're also seeing a Cubone here. Here, they seeing him a chop after this fight. Everybody getting a lot of spawns, but no, no Rhyhorn so far, which is somewhat worrying. But they're yeah, all I, so pretty early I, in, in Rock Tunnel, yeah. I think like Cubone is like the worst of the regular catches in Rock Tunnel. Yes. Uh, because it's like so it needs so much EXP to evolve. It's slow. Yeah, I mean I mean Cubone, Machop and Krabby only need four levels to evolve. I don't know what their experience curves are, but the reason why Cubone is probably the worst of those three to go for is one, it learns one more move than the others because it also learns a move on level up. Uh, on on uh, evolution, I mean, Tressel mm -hmm. and Sword stands after, and also there is a chance to get a Tower Cubone later. As uh, what I mean is a, a Cubone in Pokemon Tower, which is on paper more likely to happen than a Rock Tunnel Cubone spawn. Well, I think with the number of spawns that can happen in in Tower, it's True. not more likely. Yeah, I. I but I, but uh, it is optimal to get it in. Uh... In tower that's true because then it will only be one level away from evolving i i phrased that poorly what i meant to say is that the catch rate is higher uh, that the spawn rate is higher in pokemon tower just by one percent but still a difference i then actually now evolving the nidorino into nidic king which again will be his main partner Pokemon for the next 25, 30 minutes. Actually, yeah, 30, 35, more likely. Uh, <laughs> these, anyway. these runners are on a pretty high catch uh, count already. Like just entering tunnel and actually in yeah. Ergote already on 30 catches. Bob on a more average catch count so far. Also gets a glowing graveler on the first floor here. Getting spoiled by graveler spawns. So Pika, uh, I think actually did get crabby, right? Keep not looking at the tracker. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, so Pika has a bit of a problem with uh, party management in, in the mid game Kenga. here. Here, go ahead. Kenga on screen. <laughs> yeah, go for like it. A 1% spawn. That's also pretty annoying to catch, so I can definitely understand why he didn't go for it. Uh, yeah, Pika has a bit of a problem with, menu, with, with party management in this part. If you have all three of those four level evos. So if you have Krabby, Machop, and Cubone, because that's three slots in the party, and then you also have Rhyhorn, Nether King, or Nether Queen, and Pikachu in the party, so the party's full. If you catch anything else, that will not have space in the party. So ideally, something like Zubat that you can also catch in Rock Tunnel, but if it's in one level, you want to catch that before you catch basically anything else, or at least those higher level catches like Rhyhorn and Graveler, so you can get that evolved and out of the party, so you have enough space for all three of those four level evos. Of course, you can't really choose what you get, but that is always something you have to keep in mind when you're party managing in Pika version. Here goes a finding uh, Ryan first. Very nice, first Rhyhorn of the race.
This barely misses the excellence. Gets the catch though. This is something yeah, a bit of experience, but it, it never gives that much experience. I think it's 600 if it's an excellent. Uh, so about half is lost here to not hitting the circle. But you know, still have Raihorn, still can go fast now. And he's All been right. ignoring these. Uh, Ergotha has been ignoring the Zubats. I don't see one on his tracker, so. Maybe choosing not to catch them, or...? Considering his plan card is 55, and he doesn't have... Wait, no. He has both coughing and... No, he doesn't have Tentacle Mart, so... I guess he still has... 5 oh, yeah, over... He has, he has GP buff marked. Okay, I see. But that would just make the... plan count even if he takes that out. So I can definitely see you wanting to skip uh, Zubat or Keybone, neither of which he has caught yet, because Zubat also, even though it evolves in just one level, tries to learn two moves, one on leveling up to 25, and then one more after evolving. J just imagine uh, Ergote going for Tower, Zubat, and Cubone. That would be quite funny. Not finding Ghastly, but... <laughs> Also, I think Hapop got like four Golbats coming down to that room that he's fighting the Kanga in now. Yeah, not going for that Onyx. The Onyx in Tower is not fun. There we go, Headbub gets, gets a Raihorn. Edge, he doesn't have one yet. And is about to leave Roktana. It's not looking good for him, but luckily Pikachu does have a backup. It is slightly slower, and it'll also make the next Jesse and James fight a little bit less consistent. But it's I mean, still... He, yeah. Evie, Evie also has the backup of catching five Meowth. Yeah, good backup. <laughs> Especially because you'd have to go back to Route 25 to get that. I, 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 I will solemnly swear that if I see three Meowth spawn up there in my race <laughs> on, uh, this weekend, I, I will go for the five Meowth. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to see it. Wait, when's the race scheduled? Uh, Sunday. Sunday, ah, right. At like uh, th 30 minutes ago. Oof. Ooh. Ha. Another Kangas can. This time for Headbob trying to dodge it. I was trying to go for Zubat. Or oh, it looked like he was trying to go for Zubat. That just uh, kind of went past. There we go. Already marked it. If I saw that correctly. Oh, that, that was actually Striker. But Headbob also marked it already. Alright, so since Edgy doesn't have the uh, Raihorn, he will not be able to go for drill run strats on the next Jesse and James fight. That's still like 20 minutes or so out. Um, there is yeah. another strat where you evolve the Crowlet and then you can ride on Arcanine and just stack that, like use that as a second Pokemon and uh, use Thunderbolt on Pikachu to get through the fight. And that's probably the strat that she will be going for. Ergote finding the last minute Cubone.
There we go. So we're seeing a pretty full range of Pika strats here. Uh, above having a Raihorn, but also having a Nidder Queen, and then actually having the standard Nidder King, but not ha not getting the Raihorn. No standard Pika stuff today. I mean, that's the thing with Pika, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's never standard. <laughs> Evie is nice and consistent. I mean, it is nice and consistent when it when it comes to the order of things, but depending on Evie's stats, it's not that consistent after all. <laughs> anyway, actually, we'll now be able to swap the Nidoking King into slot one and use that as his main Pokemon, basically, for the next three or four fights. Four fights, yes. The, one, the, the best thing about this is that there's a fight against the Clefairy just coming up, and that Clefairy knows Metronome. But uh, since it's Fairy-type in this game, and uh, that's weak to Poison-type, and Nidder King has Poison Jab, she would just be able to one shot the Clefairy and not have to worry about uh, Metronome, unlike both of our other runners, unless, uh, unless Ergotay, excuse me, hits level 28, but it doesn't look like he will. It's because you learned. Uh, what is up with me today? <laughs> Eevee learns double edge at level 28, and that can also one shot the Clefairy. It is a range, as I found it out. Is... Okay. Even on like a neutral attack. TV, it is a range. And then you can have a very fun fight. I had a I, I missed the range with double edge. It used um send attack, then minimize, oh no. and oh then no. it poisoned and, and then it poisoned me. <laughs> That's the worst, okay. <laughs> Uh, the worst I ever got was uh, like using Sleep Powder turn 1 and then Whirlwind turn 2. So, you know, I had to, I had to heal the sleep, then Eevee got switched out and it swapped in Cubone and then I swapped Eevee back in and then Clefairy rolled Razor Leaf, which would have seriously hurt the Cubone if I hadn't swapped back. Yeah, so so let's boo Eve, uh, boo Edgy for like not allowing fun to happen. <laughs> no fun with Nidor King strats. Hey, we'll get to see two uh, metronomes unless uh, we see flinches for Ergote and or Headbob. Already involved in Krabby. That's always nice to see. Yeah, getting those out of the way. If he sees a an Abra on Rat seven or eight, now he can probably get that in but well, I don't know if it makes sense to many here but he at least would have the menu space especially also with the Zubats evolving here I'd prefer to go for a slightly different driver fight because he can't use poison jab He's gonna buff out the Pikachu instead and let it do the heavy lifting. Let's, uh, let's see what Metronome is uh, going to do. Chat, you can also uh, use Metronome if you want. You're putting in Growlithe and Jigglypuff here. Oh, ergo, also switching. To be the king. That makes sense if you have it in in, in EV version. Yeah, and it's it looks like it's level twenty eight. So that's also pretty nice. Yeah. 
make some of the ranges and hide out a little bit more bearable. Don't know if Etchies also had level 28. He got his like lost, right? So he I don't think so. It's just above the arc nine here, so now on thirty three catch the same as Ergate. Uh, actually, it's on 35. Yeah. Yeah, misread the tracker. All right. Most important part of the run. Uh, Eric goes with the move tutor first. Okay, Evie learns another useful move here in Glitzy Glow, which is a, I believe, also 90 power psychic type move that. So it sets up a light stream. So very useful again, especially for this next section of the game where you're fighting a lot of poison types. But then, and PK version does this too, we're going to use this function right here, which is an emulation of the ability synchronize, where you can force a specific ability on the Pokemon that you catch. And all of the runners are going to pick modest nature. Did I say ability? I meant nature. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, and, th and this is like the most important reason we set the clock. Because the synchronizing function works for this day, like till the switch clock turns over uh, to the next day. Yeah. Um, and so in the, in the early days, it has happened that like people had the clock roll over. And um, then it's uh, like, I mean, some people don't even set uh, synchronize in this race. In this tournament. <laughs> yeah, some people just get a quiet star instead. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it is optimal. To like Yeah, yeah, I mean it is optimal to just randomly get modest and not have to go to the to the uh, channeler, but you know the, the odds are one in twenty five, so <laughs> How did Hapop get self-destruct out of metronome? Then I'm writing boom and chat. Didn't pay attention to the fight, I must admit. Hapop also getting a puppy here. Love to see that for a catch count alone. All right, and Ergerton actually basically neck and neck here, with Etchy being two catches up, uh, both on this Hypno fight. Yeah, Little King's still level 27. Don't know if it levels up here. Ideally, it does. Level 28 is kind of important for the next fight for Etchy. Yeah, that's at level 28 here, so probably we'll be able to skip the axe attack for the next fight. Yeah, should be with 64 uh, attack. Ergotis King, meanwhile, hitting level 29 on the same fight, so slightly better off. Uh, can now also go for the Nidoking strat for that fight, and then... Put the Eevee back into the lead. Or I guess he could just go into the Justin James fight with that setup as well. Yeah, the order for Justin James doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah. I think you probably just switch whenever you have to heal. That makes sense, yes. But this also does force you to do like a 2C fight against the Grimer coming up next, which Eevee would usually take on alone, if I recall correctly. Uh, yeah, depends on your HP and such. If you like, you can combine oh. it with healing and. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Virgo's gonna get the Gobat Evo here.
Alright. But you're already doing some swapping here for this fight. It's gonna go into the fight with just Pikachu, probably going for two Thunderbolts to take out the Grimer, and then has the Jigglypuff in slot two to use as a sacrifice mon against Jesse and James. Because this Jigglypuff is super weak, so it's very likely that one or both of Jesse and James will go for the kill on Jigglypuff. So Pika will have to tank one less hit. Or one hit less, I think. How you say that? Um, that's a really nice way to make this fight more consistent. If you don't have Rhyhorn. We're going on the same grammar fight. Yeah, going for the 2C with Nidoking King and Eevee. So probably could go for, yeah, Helping Hand, Glitzy Glow, which should guarantee you one turn. Glitzy Glow can, with very high special attack, be guaranteed without Helping Hand. But again, special attack has to be really high, if I recall correctly. And to answer Phoenix's question in the chat, Etchy did indeed miss Rhyhorn, so he's doing Pika strats for JNJ2 here in a minute. Yeah, and to guarantee like Glitzy Go Glow at level 28 or higher, you need like 77 special attack on Eevee. Yeah, that's Which very is like high. Pl plus nature and a bunch of uh, AVs. It's one of those ranges that you get like once every 50 runs or something. Yeah, I, I have it in my current PB, which kind of sucks oh. to have like that to run against. Yeah, it's just one turn that you save. Yeah, but, but then you also saying. save that you save that turn on on Jesse and James. True. Yeah. 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 High special battles. attack. High special attack for Eevee is really good for Hydra. That's true. On on Archer a turn. Like I, I I killed the wheezing on Archer one. All right, then looks like yeah, Argate just going for Eevee plus Rhyhorn for the Jesse and James fight, which is the standard Eevee strat. Not going for the Drill Run strat. With Rhyhorn and Nidoking, King, which Eevee can also do. Yeah, and probably like not happy that he forgot to like when he swapped to also deposit. Those are like the little things that you can just get so annoyed with, like. Why did I have to open the menu an extra time? Like I could have just done this in one go. But... Yeah. Just have the, the little things that add up across the run that can really make quite a difference. All right, looks like uh, actually got a decent opening here. The Jigglypuff gets knocked out and the Pika gets toxic. Means it's still a very good health. We we'll use an antidote here, which does mean that I don't think Weezing has a way of killing the Nether King here, since it doesn't have access to Flamethrower and Thunderbolt in this fight yet. Is going for plus four Thunderbolt here. Is that guaranteed in the fight? I actually don't know. Ah, right, but he's modest, so probably has a pretty good range. There goes Eevee hanging on in red health. And is also paralyzed, which is unfortunate. How did that... Our box survive. That is unfortunate for Argo.
Yeah. Let's knock it out now, but doesn't seem to have been the best Jesse and James fight for him. No, the the notes say yeah, don't get unlucky. <laughs> if only it were that easy. Yeah, I just have to many here now to heal everyone. Two statuses and some HP and EV. So it definitely seems like Edgy is ahead. Uh, around the halfway mark of the run right here. One catch ahead of Ergate and also finished with the same fight that Ergate is now starting. Yeah, and head Bob with one catch more only, like, the, the, j just, be, just behind the, like having to walk up, but like still within range to, to get back. Oh, definitely. Uh, Headbub still has a lot of time to come back and isn't that far behind Ergate. Yeah, the, the, hard, the hard part up to now was mostly just like catch luck and spawn luck. And uh, now we're getting into the... a bit more into the area where there are like fights that can just be annoying. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're never really dangerous, but they're just very annoying. I mean, there are some fights that are pretty dangerous, though you usually see runners in the tournament go for safety stats to avoid that danger. I mean, yeah, in this, in this mid-game section with the hideout fights, they aren't really dangerous. They can be a little bit dangerous for Eevee, especially uh, this Giovanni fight that Ergate is entering now. Yeah, and That's the two usually... uh, Jesse and James fights, they're just... they can go, go wrong. Definitely. But since you do have basically a full party to fall back to, you can always come back from it. Like, you won't just die like in the late game. Mm -hmm. Start with the X attack for Ergote. Because there's a fake out. Now Sisley slides to burn. I think you have to heal that. Yeah, going for the heal. 21 HP probably a little too low would probably uh, get taken out by slash crits. Yeah, even by non crits. Oof, okay. This he is minus defense, yeah. Minus defense, yeah, yeah, okay. That makes sense then. I thought this on James get... Day. Yeah. Now you get all the HP back from the Rhyhorn. Yeah, that's just so satisfying in Eevee with a bouncy bubble on Rhyhorn. Get that four times super effective damage for the easy one shot. Yeah, they they were so nice with like spreading them out the, the fights where you can just like heal back to full for free. You have them on the bridge, like you never have to heal on the bridge because you're like basically always full at the end. In uh, in in rock tunnel, you can like heal up at the end just before the rival fights. Yeah, it's just very convenient all throughout the run for EV. Uh, okay, I don't think either of the two runners that I finished with Hideout have gone for the extra ultra balls. Makes sense considering everyone's catch count counts are pretty high. Looking at the tracker right now for Etchy, who's just going to be entering Pokemon Tower here. Uh, still has a high, like a 55 plant count here on the tracker, so can probably drop a couple catches, though one of them is Tentacool that he has still marked. Uh, but yeah, it probably only has to go for like five more catches. 
So definitely doesn't need the extra ultra balls. And the same is basically true for Argate. Yeah, we won't see these runners waiting for stuff to spawn here. Definitely not. You do like to get the Ghastly here, just so you can get the Pikachu or Eevee out of the party. There we go, that's the Ghastly spawning in a kind of inconvenient spot, but you take what you can get in Pokemon Tower. Actually didn't lure, so this uh, Ghastly is level 27. It does mean that it will take less time to evolve, like less time to hit that level up. Yeah, and it's uh, it, it will still always run for the, uh, the Snorlax fight in a bit. Because ghost types can always run. And that just makes Ghastly a very good catch to get here. Now, Pikachu should realistically always be able to get away anyway, because it's also very fast. Yeah, and Eevee, most often, you're like high enough level for it to also be able to yeah. run. Yeah. Uh, but of course, you don't want those two Pokemon to get any more experience because this, we're going to bench them pretty soon here. Uh, and there's a lot of catches still to get. So ideally, you just catch the Ghastly and are able to deposit Pikachu and or Eevee. Not and or, just or. Catch <laughs> you with another lucky crit there. These two fights are actually very nice for Pikachu because uh, the Haunters usually go for Sucker Punch. Yeah. Which is very annoying for Eevee because you always go into the uh, third Jason James fight with a little bit of chip damage. But Zippy Zap actually has a higher priority than, than Sucker Punch, so uh, Pikachu's never going to get hit with that. Yeah, actually getting the double heal pad there. That is annoying. I still don't know how that happens or how you can avoid that. I get that so often. Yeah, it's like both ankle and tile based, I believe. Yeah, I figured that it had something to do with the angle, but I've never quite figured out how to enter the pad to avoid that. Headbub now finished with Hideout, so I'm still gonna pick up uh, Sky Dash and fly back to Lavender Town. And both Ergote and Echi on the same cutscene. Just gonna skip Cubone's mom. Oh well. <laughs> Echi is gaining time on this cutscene. Oh, okay. Was, Better was, slight, was slightly behind going in and slightly ahead going out. There goes ahead again. So you see mashing yeah. wow. can swing both ways. <laughs> Edgy peaked too soon with his mashing. Alright, so it looks like we're going to be seeing two JNJ3 files here, side by side, the EV version and the Pika version. They are actually quite similar. Because EV has access to a super effective move. And actually it's just gonna sack the Jigglypuff again. Headbub, on the other hand, withdrew the unevolved Growlithe that's gonna follow him around like a good puppy uh, all the way up the tower. And he's gonna sack that uh, on. A power of love on Ergote's side. Ooh, nice. Yeah, our buck should be going down here now for both of them. And then because Edgy is modest, he may have a pretty good range on... And he's also 31. Pretty good plus 4 range on the Weezing. Yeah, seems like he's going for it. Just uh, 
Thunderbolt helping hand and hope to get the one shot. Gets it. Perfect. What is Nidder King with 66 attack for Echi? That is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, now before we get to the next uh, bit of the game, I would like to remind people uh, that this tournament, um, you can you can donate to help uh, with the prizes for this tournament. Uh, oh no! Headbutt hitting an optional. Sorry that I'm interrupting. Ooh. Yeah, that's okay. I was thinking like we're like in a nice safe spot, uh, but you never know with this game. You never um, know. But uh, you can donate to help like uh, p p p p uh, get some extra prize uh, support uh, uh, in, in, in this uh, tournament. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to post the link, but we'll see. Yeah. Um, I, I am oh. planning to donate w once I'm out of the tournament. Right. Looks like we're getting a DNF here out of Head Bob. Let me just check the race time, but... Yeah, DNF. Alright. Understandable, Solidity. perhaps. Solid he couldn't win anymore. Yeah, so... The stakes for this run... This, this is an upper record run. Uh, none of our runners here today will get eliminated. Uh, you have to win to stay in the upper bracket. And then the only difference between, between second and third place is that second place is guaranteed part one for the lower bracket next turn, uh, next round. And with the DNF, Headbub is now obviously definitely going to be in part two, unless there, there are more, there are two more DNFs and then I don't know what the organizers will decide or how the organizers will decide who gets put two and who gets put one. I'm sure that etiquette will say we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I don't think we will get there because like I, I, I'm I, in the last race of, of uh, round one for upper bracket so uh, if I see that we have two DNFs before me I will just finish the run even if it's like a 320 just to get a guaranteed uh, Part one for round two. And I think I but speak he... for the other two races in my race as well. Yeah, but even that's no guarantee. No, that is a guarantee what, what, for part one. No, but I mean, like, part one versus part two is, is not a guarantee for. Oh, no, definitely. <laughs> you can still get some very scary runners. Uh... As, as we've seen from this, this, this round mostly. Yeah, I mean, Echi is a part two runner for this race. That really says everything, basically. And also t being the part three runner for my race. That's like... Yeah, Etiquette, another part two runner. Like, yeah. I think beforehand, Etiquette and Echi were like two of the big favorites for the win of this tournament, and both are in part two. In the lower bracket, we have Wave Warrior and Aspect. In the same race. In, in the same race, like t time wise, the PB wise, the two fastest runner in the lower fastest runners in the lower bracket and they're facing each other. Alright, let's get back to the run here. Uh, both of our runners now, both of our remaining runners. Now on Route 17 here, another important catching section. They're looking for a couple of catches, mostly Ponyta and Dodua though. Etchi already got the pony. The question is now, will he get a Dodua? Okay, Agate already got the pony as well.
And she's just picking up Severas's first and later catches. And there's the Dodio. <laughs> just running back up the route. Don't want to see that usually. And that's the Her other extreme. Dodo just running right into early pay. Yeah, that's the, that's the more optimal. Uh, that's what you want to see. For sure. So actually, let me look at the tracker one more time in detail. Keep clicking away. Uh, actually, on 51 plants now. Or so 52. Yeah, he'll either catch like a Grimer and then not evolve it, or he catch, he'll catch something like a Magmar, although I personally wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> or maybe he will not evolve uh, Thariu, say so picking up the Water Stone. Sure, sure. Just go for the Dodrio alt main. I mean, the, those water catches are not like optimal, the only one controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, everyone hates uh, Tentacool. Wish he hadn't sold his fossil, or he could go for uh, the old Kabutop strat if he had picked that up. Posse, posse. <laughs> but that is also pretty slow to get the fossil uh, revived. And, and the Arbok, or the, the, the Aerodactyl. True, true. Yeah, but that's from the days when uh, the rules didn't allow two controllers, so... I'm sure 2C fights Posse Posse would be... I'm taking on for the candy on Pony here, since he doesn't have the Arcanine to ride on. Uh, wants to be able to swap to that ride as soon as possible, whereas Echi will... Let the Ponyta evolve from catch experience. Saves that candy. Which lets him skip the Lapras candy later. Since he ha has picked up the Rod 6 candy, the Tower candy, and the Rod 17 candy. Yeah, the Rapidash is slightly faster. But the menuing is just probably enough to it for it to. Got you. Got you. Red Argate, meanwhile, has his catch route figured out. It's gonna let the Pidgey evolve into Pidgey Yacht. So, two stages. The Psyduck, the Cubone, has yet to evolve for him, and then the Dodo also. Unevolved in combination with the uh, Staryu and the two gift Pokemon will add up to 50 for Argate. And I guess Echi will decide what he gets when he gets there as his final catch outside of the Staryu. Both runners will be picking up Sea Scheme here to be able to. Surf on the water, and then we'll go and catch us a star. Alright, let's see. Doesn't go for Tangela. I can't blame him. Goes for a star. What will we have? Ah, slightly below average here. 1037 for Edgy. Not necessarily what you want to see. Let's hope it works out for him. Still able to get 31 IV special attack and speed with a star. <laughs> so that would be the most glass cannon of glass cannons. Arctana also on the way.
and she stops the door. Just really wants to get one thing and mention, like I said, grammar, magmar, doesn't matter. And grammar is decently common anyway. Let's see the stats for Sayu. I actually didn't see the CP value here. Ah. I also missed it. That's not good for Echi. Bad speed. Okay ish, but also pretty low special attack, so this is not. This is not a good star. This looks like a speed type of Rapid Ash, even, so. Hmm, don't want to see it. Definitely could be worse, of course, but it's not a great star. Let's see the level 46 evolved stats here. One, you see the scald. 115, 115. Okay, that's even a speed tie with the nine tails, maybe, right? Pretty slow, even with the three plus one. Uh, nine deals test 113 speed, so Okay, it's... so, okay, good enough for that at least, but we'll get outsped by the Rapid Ash. And there's the grammar. So actually now, also done with his catches. Ooh, that's his last, is that his last Ultra Ball? <laughs> we'll have to be careful. <laughs> yeah, I already ran out of uh, Great Balls earlier. Alright, but gets the catch and now he's done. Again, doesn't want this to evolve, so... We'll have to get rid of it. Let's see, Ergote. Yeah, so that's 51 plants, so I'm not sure what his plan is here. Ergote has, like, medium speed and slightly below average special attack. Okay, okay. But so he will... Probably out. I think he will outspeed uh, the Rapidash. I just went to 45 as well, so you wouldn't do that if you had bad speed. A yeah, dynamic chat just pointing out that he could. He's skipping laptops, that is true, since he doesn't need the candy. Uh, he will be able to skip that. This pony will definitely evolve from the Blaine experience. He may need to take the Walk of Shame to Blaine's gym. Walk of Shame. Uh, paralyzed but hitting. That's very good. He could, in theory, just skip the skip the Lapas altogether and not go to that floor and self-call. Meanwhile, Sandy is thinking that it is the perfect start to use Lapras <laughs> to actively get it and use it in the E4. I did not... I saw that there was some theorizing happening on... on... Some potential Lapras strats, but I yeah, have a Etic feeling that's not what's going to happen here. <laughs> Etiquette's Discord was uh, very busy this morning. <laughs> I look forward to Sandy whipping out the Lapras strats in their race, though. I shot with plus four psychic on Dragonite, we'll get the Oko. Very interesting. Another chancy, yes. Second one for Echi. On top of that, Cliffable that he saw in Mammon. And yeah, he will just walk over to the gym now without the pony evolved. It's a little unfortunate to get not get that before, but the Blaine experience will be enough. Oh, 
Ergate stepping into a coffin. That seems to be the theme of Ergate's run today. This yeah. Spawning right in his face. The early breakouts and. Yeah, those two things, really. The unfortunate encounters. And I really think that has been like. That's the entire difference between these two runners on time. Yeah, definitely feels like it. Wow. I'm just gonna finish up the quiz here and go into the lane fight. Uh, slightly better off. No, actually, never mind. He was the one with bad speed, so. Uh... We'll get. We'll have to take a flab, flab blitz hit out of the rapidash on top of the flame pro from Magmar. That shouldn't usually be a problem. But it is annoying to get that extra hit, especially if you are low on, on healing items. I'm not sure what Edgy's super potion count is right now. Gets confused, so oh, I have oh. to use. There go. Uh, oh no! Oh, okay. too quickly. I ate my input. Oh no! That's so unfortunate. Getting an option on the quiz. Two skulls. Yeah. Actually, getting burned. Also, not ideal with while getting outsped. Yes, yeah, then you the... might get. You might get into quick attack range. Yeah, that's the danger here. That's like three burn ticks, right? Yeah, three burn ticks plus the flare blitz damage could knock you into QA range. Yep. Actually, yep, that is QA range, I think. We'll have to heal here. Like after the burn damage. Yeah, I think so. I think he may have to heal. Not no, going okay. to. Okay, he's safe. Maybe a high, uh, higher defense. Yeah. He's definitely more aware of his stats than we are right now, so... Probably figured that he wasn't actually in danger. Yeah, but now you have to do the early menu and basically do two menus. Once where, one way he heals and one way he'll teach Thunderbolt. Oh, that's true. What Keith points out, uh, he actually doesn't have a way of healing the burn. He used both of the full heal items already. Oh, never mind. And it looks like Ergote has a question for the tournament organizer. If I also DNF, am I still second place? <laughs> that is actually a good and, question. And, I, I... And, 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 and you were saying that we don't get three DNFs, uh, Triff? I'm sorry. The question then is, could Edgy now also be enough? <laughs> like, where does it <laughs> where does it end, right? I mean, that would be a new world record, right? <laughs> Winning the race in just over two hours. Technically, his race for record. Yes, that is true. So, yeah, I feel like we need a word from from Jordan or Etiquette on this. Yeah, things are being asked in the Discord. Perfect. Guess we'll have a an answer here. Well, you have the organizer role, Jordan. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we wait for that judgment. All eliminated one wild card advances. Okay. Let's put the memes aside for a second. Uh, both of our runners are gonna. Go into search now. 
basically neck and neck, but Edgy is far, Cat is ahead of Ergate. Yeah, about two two minutes difference between these two runners, so... Yeah. The option I really cement, cemented that. I mean, Edgy, like, Edgy got in second in the previous race by dying in the E4. So, it can happen again, and that, that was way more than two minutes. Yes, that is true. Though in Edgy's situation, I feel like he would just go for safe strat if he's aware that he's two minutes ahead. And I assume he is because he's been chatting. I, I would like uh, to join the chat in the stating that I'm also not an organizer. I'm just doing commentating here. Yeah, I mean, same for me. I mean, we picked the best spot in the run to be having this discussion. There isn't much happening here. We're just defeating Serge and Erika to maybe talk a bit about what's going on in the run. Uh, I was going to see the runners teach Thunderbolts. We all know this. They're just going to go through the maze uh, here in a minute. Yeah, these are just like, we're slightly overleveled for the, for these gyms. Like, Serge is supposed to be the third gym, Erika the fourth. And while we're only doing them like fourth and fifth, so pushing them one gym out, it's still there's a, there's a bit of a level expectation uh, gap that we're uh... the the game doesn't intend for you to be level uh, forty five here. Oh yeah, we we just waltz through these gems. Spamming Scald and Psychic. Luckily, it is going to get a little bit more interesting after this fight. We will be seeing the blue fight first. Both of our runners do have a Dodrio, so the blue fight itself should be pretty safe. I, for some reason, had to go for Fire Blast in both of my tournament races so far. Can't get a Dodrio to spawn in a race. Uh... Yeah, I also didn't have one in my... Uh second round race. But then we get the first real potential time waster of the last hour with uh, Archer Double and Surf Co. Well, we could in theory see Ergote catch up if actually gets a real bad fight. Like we could see something. I don't wanna I don't wanna jinx it too much, so I'm not gonna go into the specifics, but Archer can go real wrong. Can't just lose a turn or two. Can it can be very very long the fight. Yeah, we have seen like a 
a five minute archer to fight. Yeah, I mean, I always, I, I, my mind always goes back to one of Headstrong's archer fights where Trace went through all of his team on the fight. All four of his Pokemon died. Yeah, fi finding out that he does have Pidgeotto. We we never knew before. Yeah, that's still a lot of RNG. And in theory, Echi could get all of the bad RNG. So, Agate is still in this. Nice Abra. Slightly too late. Yeah. Can't use it now. Okay, also getting the Dojo evolution just in time to use it for uh, the blue fight. Though Dua yes. has a very rough range with Drill Pack, so you usually don't want to go for that, but since he does get the evolution here. Yeah, it's all. It's always scary if you catch it lost, but it's uh, like you always get it as long as you don't uh, have it as uh, uh, as as bait in uh, the Ted fight. Uh, you don't always get it. Just want to set that straight. Uh, if you don't, for instance, catch a grammar, if you just catch the star after, it won't evolve in time. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, I had that happen in my last PG attempt. <laughs> well, th that's what uh, the Rapidash is for. Yeah, I mean, I have used Fire Blast more often since the tournament started than in my entire time playing Let's Go before that. So, <laughs> don't know what it is for me personally. Anyway, neither of our runners will have to deal with Fire Blast stuff in this fight. Actually, never mind. Actually, going for the Fire Blast. By choice. Oh no, Dodo hasn't evolved for him. Well, there we go. <laughs> Didn't even pay attention to that. Hits the Fire Blast though, so... Doesn't matter. This fight is really awkward. Uh, if you miss the Fire Blast, because the um, Executor can set up Light Screen, which really reduces your damage and just drags out the fight. And it, it can also go for... I'm not quite sure. It has a pretty high power Grass-type move that it can use on Starmie, which is to force you to heal before the Archer fight. And of course, the Dodo evolves from the blue experience for Echi. But hey, that does mean that he just needs the Mac Evo, yeah, and the Paragon. He has Lapras unmarked, so he will skip the Lapras room entirely. Yeah, and hopefully not like Missile Memory to floor 7 anyway. Yeah, I'll misclick and accidentally mash through to floor 11. Who would, have, who would that ever happen to? <laughs> Another fire boss. Okay, both runners just choosing to go for... Well, I guess, no. Ergate actually just choosing to go for fire blast here. Yeah, we have a question about why is this fight two versus one? Um, that e Executor is very difficult to deal with uh, for Starmie. Because it's... Grass and Psychic, so you, 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 you'd you have no super effective moves against it. Uh, you don't even have effective moves against it, basically. Um, so you, and, and it has a bunch of very annoying moves. Like it can light screen um, to make sure that like the range against like the, you can't really set up on it uh, because of that, because it just like takes more setup. Um, so yeah, that's why they since since they allow two controllers, this fight has gotten a lot um, easier. Uh, th this was one of the hardest fights to get through in the olden times when you were only allowed one controller. 
the olden times. The e e olden times. So, Etchy looks like he got uh, self destruct protect turn one, which is the uh, opening that, well, I guess it's not the worst opening, but it is usually the slowest out of the three standard openings you can get on the Arch Double Fight. So all he can hope for is a four turn, and it is pretty likely that he gets a five turn even, depending on what Cubone does. Which means if we see self destruct no protect for Urgate, he could catch up like 20 seconds here. Self destruct? I didn't see protect, I think. Yeah, nope. okay. Crit on Mach 2, doesn't matter, but interesting. And there we go, that's the best opening for Urgate. Now has the chance if Cubone doesn't go for Bomberang. For Echi. Let's see. Goes for Headbutt, doesn't get the knockout. So Echi with the five turn. If uh, Cubone now cooperates for Urgate on the other hand. The famed three turn. turn. Yeah. Okay, hits one bomberang. He, the trace needs to hit another here in the next turn. Sadly, uh, if Cubone targets the gold bat, it will usually go for headbutt, and that is not enough to take out the eradicate from this HP. Psycho punch connecting does mean that Cubone at least went for a damaging move. So now, uh, focus energy. <laughs> bomberang miss. Oh no. <laughs> That can always also happen. So far turn for Agate, so one turn faster than what Echi got here. Now gets the Marowak Evo pretty late. Maybe he withdrew that late or something. But hey, evolution is evolution. Yeah, you still you still need to uh, get. Uh, why are why are we getting all these Pokemon anyway? We haven't. <laughs> we never even mentioned that. <laughs> I guess that is true. We are looking for uh, fifty Pokemon in total registered in the Pokédex because every gym leader in this game has a requirement uh, that you have to fulfill in order to be let into their gym. Some of them are pretty easy, like uh, having a grass type for the Brock Gym, or being level 15 for the Misty Gym, or just having any Pokemon for the Erica Gym. But then Koga wants you to show that what wants you to show him that you have 50 different Pokemon in your Pokedex. And since we need Koga's badge in order to finish the game, we have to catch those 50 Pokemon. And that is a huge part of this run, and also, in my opinion, and I'm sure that many of the runners in this tournament share that opinion, what makes this run so much fun and so unique uh, within other Pokemon speedruns. Yes, as Scott on the chat points out, there is a, a category extension run called Kicked by Koga, where uh, your goal is to get to Koga's gym and get kicked out, so <laughs> you catch as, as few Pokemon as possible and just try to get to Fuchsia in like roughly an hour and 40 minutes, I believe, to get there. All right, actually going into the Geo 2 fight, meanwhile Urgate finishing up J&J 4, the final Justin James fight. Also the easiest, Rapidash getting poison is kind of unfortunate. That can happen if you go into that fight with Rapidash because uh, Weezing then likes to go for a sludge on it, a sludge bomb. 
Yeah, you can try to stomp to uh, flinch it, but that's mm. not guaranteed. Far from. Yeah, uh, if you have Dodria here, then, uh, well, we think he usually goes for Thunderbolt on either of the two Pokemon that you have out, and if it goes for Dodrio, it really doesn't matter if it gets paralyzed, but since we will be using Rapidash for some safety stats potentially, and the next free heal, I don't, is there even a free heal left? I don't think so. So uh, you kind of have to get rid of that. Never mind, there is one free heal in, in Victory Road at the uh, Officer Jenny here. But you don't want to carry that poison around with you. So actually, we'll have to heal that. Probably can wait till the post Sabrina menu, though, to deal with it. Y yeah. Or. No, Argati was the one that got poison. Sorry. Yeah, but you you don't want it for like the rifle battle, and 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 before that in uh, Geo's gym, just like the two controller fights, and adding the extra leg. Yeah, I have a feeling that Argate might go for some one C strats in Geo's gym. He maybe potentially catch up a little bit. So yeah, actually skipping the lap press that you can get in Silfco, you have to get off on a different floor with the elevator. So it is, I think, the slowest of the three uh, gift Pokemon that you can get during the run, but it usually still is faster to get it than to get any other Pokemon evolved. But since you would have to specifically deposit the uh, Grimer to stop it evolving, I think it works out in a way where it is pretty much even. It definitely wouldn't have made sense if he still needed the candy in the Lapras room, but uh, doesn't need that. So it's just able to skip it entirely and go straight down to the first floor. Yeah, not something we often see. Skipping Lapras and the candy. But in this case, definitely the right decision. All right, Etchy now on his way to Sabrina's gym. Gonna see him go through a couple of teleporters. Now, of course, you always want to try to hit the center of the teleporter. Uh, if you don't, there will be a short animation where the character will align with the center so that the teleport animation can properly play. This loses a little bit of time each time. So, uh, yeah, just like, like that. Like here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you really want to try to avoid it for most of these teleports. Like that, that's much better. <laughs> Well, not much better. It is just better. It's a binary situation. You either hit it or you don't. Yeah, and it's very finicky. It is pretty easy on these uh, teleporters where you just go straight across. But if you have to go like diagonally, diagonally across, then yeah, it can be pretty tricky to hit the center. Well, one more teleporter left for Etchy, there we go. And one more on the way out. That's the hardest one on the way out. Ooh, yeah, because you can't see it until you step down to its level. So Ergote is basically just the, the teleporters behind. Yeah. One gym puzzle. Yeah, one gym puzzle, exactly. Both of them are on, on 50 catches already, I think. They just... Neither of them marked the Porygon yet, but that is fine. Uh, Ergote marked the Porygon, and he still has Pidgeotto. Oh, never mind. Okay. So he's actually the but, gym puzzle and the evolution behind him. 
Oh, yeah. Well, edgy fighting Sabrina here. I didn't see if you got light screen turn one, but that is the expected opening for Sabrina, so can just go for two skulls. Ooh, that crit. A little scary, but it's fine. Sabrina's Pokemon do not have any priority nope. moves, so... No quick attack. No quick attack. Uh, no sucker punch, nothing. D so... Doesn't slow Slowbro have quick attack? <laughs> no. Yeah, this is a pretty... easy fight once you get through the Mr. Mime. See what Arctic gets. There is a very rare chance that Mr. Mime just can never go for light screen, which saves your turn. But uh, yeah, I've personally never seen it. And there we go, just land screen turn one. That is the most lucky situation. Just set up to express attacks in one X speed and then scald twice to stall out the five turns. Pretty sure you'd still have to hit a pump to get the Mr. Mam down in one turn if there were no light screen. Anyway, actually now done with Sabrina's gym is gonna do a pretty large menu here where he heals, uses an elixir, deposits everything that is in Starmie or Rapidash. That's uh, gonna candy to 49 on the Starmie. And then also gonna swap some X items around for a more convenient in battle menu. There we go. Yeah, his uh, his speed should be fine, but his special attack is not great. Doesn't have any good scald ranges for Cocos Gym. Arctay, of course, is a level lower here on the Starmie because he went for the 2 plus 2 candy strat where you just level to 45 instead of 46. Meaning he will just use two candies now to also get to 49 after this Pidgeot evolution. Meanwhile, Edgy's about to check if he can count to 50. He can. So he'll be allowed to enter the gym. And this very first fight in the gym, Caden, is one of those fights that can potentially really lose you quite some time. So we just want to see Caden uh, go for protect on one on the monk. Or Moonblast, or... Moonblast, no special attack drop is also... The thing is, if he doesn't go for protect turn 1, he's gonna go for protect turn 2, so you're gonna lose a turn. Yeah. Protect, protect turn 1 is just the best opening that you can get from Caden. Just don't minimize, want to see... Minimize protect, minimize. Go! Okay. That's the Moonblast, so very likely gonna go for protect. No? Okay. You know what? This is also fine. Didn't get special attack dropped from minimize, so uh, can now go for the Scald on Hedral. Didn't get an extra protect. Jet. There it is. <laughs> Best protect for Echi. It's so unlikely to get through this gym without a single protect because every single Pokemon knows it. And you fight six of them, so. Like the two protects on Muck and Weezing specifically because you set up the X items on those turns are fine, good even. But uh, 
On every other Pokemon, you'd rather have them go for a different move. <laughs> Ergotina also entering the gym while she starts the Koga fights. Protect turn one on the Weezing is what you want to see. This Weezing can also go for an uh, explosion, I believe, which it's not very common. But it, if it goes for explosion turn one, it saves your turn because you get the free turn of setup and it just also takes itself out. Though you will have to heal that HP later. This explosion can do some very serious damage and you don't want to go into the Giovanni fight with low health. <laughs> Alright, Argotan Caden. That's toxic turn one. Okay, that is also unfortunate because this mech can also just go for minimize turn two. You do like to see it go for protect. No. Hey. No 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 no. Please don't. No. Oh god. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Hergate just getting the Caden experience right there. Yeah. Because once once this mech goes for minimize, this fight can go so wrong. Luckily, didn't get special attack drop. Yeah. Yeah, this is like the fight Etchy would have had for Ergate to like get back in this. Yeah, really unfortunate for Ergate. Let's see. Maybe he'll get the perfect Koga fight to make up for it a little bit. Alright. Has already lost a little bit of uh, HP, so... Yeah, no, just goes for Toxic again, that's slow. Has run out of antidotes, so we'll now have to use the full heal special items to heal the poison. I'm not sure if he bought full heals in, uh, in Saffron. Going for Hydro Pumps. Interesting choice. Randall would be proud. <laughs> okay, so I uh, I have a bit of a, a ruling update. All right. After a long discussion. Um, the, the ruling is that uh, a DNF is an automatic third place. All right. So even if Ergote would end up DNFing, that would still count as a third place. All right. Thank you for the clarification. So you definitely want to play out the race if someone already DNF'd. Yeah. The situation to at least get the pot one guaranteed. Exactly. Because again, there are so many amazing runners still in the upper bracket that will get eliminated this, this round. And if you can dodge three of them by getting into pot one, then that's just very good, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and since you have to win, 
the lower bracket is so brutal. Yeah. Is that is where eliminations do happen? Yeah, I've managed to like get on, uh, like advance on time to this round. But there will be no time advance in this round at all. I, uh, no, I, I was, I, I am the fastest time in in my pot, even though I'm like the second to last to place in the pot. But huh. that's just depending on like your draw. Who your opponents are. Yeah, yeah. But there will only be 15 runners left in the tournament after this round, so someone will have to get eliminated. Most likely, go I'm I'm most likely going to be one of those people, but. We'll see on Sunday. If I have to go for the five me out that I promised earlier, then it will be me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. Although I would love to see it just for the content. E exactly. <laughs> just do the early Arcanine into instant DNF. No, just keep running on Arcanine. Sure. Yeah, King Trutz would love to see it, but he's in the same race, so... <laughs> You'll have to watch the VOD later, or watch while he's racing. Yeah, one more, one, one more opponent less. Alright, so... This is where Ergotay needs to opt in to risky strats in order to even have a chance of catching up. Uh, actually, he's going to go for a 2C Giovanni fight here. Uh, I'm pretty sure he also went for 2C Samuel, which is the ace trainer that you fight in here. But Ergotay kind of wants to go for 1C Samuel and 1C Giovanni, because that is slightly faster but also a lot riskier, especially in the case of Samuel. Ooh, power this, of love. This is a lot slower, so yeah, 1C. Power of love when you don't want to see it. Yeah, this is like this the second worst power of love, I would guess. Yeah. Just, oh. Ooh, we're gonna take ratio. Uh, just to clarify maybe because I saw some some people who are newer to the game and chat earlier. Power of Love. I, I don't actually know if it was introduced in this game. Uh, but uh, in, in general, the friendship mechanic in this game leads to a couple of extra effects the higher your Pokemon gets in terms of friendship. Oh, Bergate dying to Megahorn. Wow. That's the risk. That's the risk of the 1C Samuel. Don't. That's so unfortunate. The rich get richer, yeah. poor get poorer. D don't do this at home, kids. These are trained <laughs> professionals on a closed circuit. Yeah, I gotta say we did get the ruling. I don't know if you can hear the commentary, but the DNF is an order third. Yeah, like Phoenix is writing. So if there's no third DNF this round, you you would go to pot two. Okay, it gets double Mega Horns. Yeah, double missing Hydro Pump. Skipping Samuel's Optima. Yeah, you, you can. You, you won't have to refight him now if he does it correctly. But it does mess with experience a little bit. That is just very, very unfortunate for Ayute. Anyway, I was about to explain Power of Love when I got interrupted by Rudy. Samuel being mean. 
Um, oh, that is not the correct way to go. Okay, so you will have to be fat Sam. Oh no, he just locked himself into like a bunch of optionals. Ah, uh, let's not think too much about that. That's just gonna bring us down. Uh... Poor Ergote. Yes, yeah, so the thing is, I have to explain this now. There's this, um... I forgot what, what name the trainer class is. There's this trainer that you fight with the Nidorino and the Rhyhorn. And if you leave the gym and re-enter after you defeated him, he moves up one slot. So you can get to the center of the gym quicker. But if you go this way, then he will block those same panels. So now he will fight two extra optionals to get to Giovanni. Or he will take an... Yeah. yeah. He should have gone to the right earlier there, not go this part. Because yeah. this is two extra, op three optionals in total instead of one extra optional. Yeah, I think, if, I don't know what, okay, this trainer is another queen. Maybe he should just take another loss here. Uh, instead of fighting more optionals. Okay, never mind. The loss would be pretty slow with another queen. That's so unfortunate. Actually, meanwhile, finishing up Bravo 5. Uh, so will I ever get to explain Power of Love? Nope. <laughs> uh, it's only, only two options. Only. Yeah, it's just two, but it's still annoying. And the Queen, and I, I don't know what this trainer has either. Dark Trio, great! Giovanni Light. Um, so, with friendship in this game, there are certain thresholds that your Pokémon can cross, where you get stat boosts at the next... Uh, I think at the second of those thresholds, you start get, being able to spontaneously heal yourself from status effects through the power of friendship, and then at a certain point, your Pokémon will also start to be able to hang on on one HP, just randomly, because it likes you. And that's what we call power of love, so uh, that's what happened to Echi on Giovanni. Yeah, this is the way it's supposed to do the gym if you've uh, left and re-entered. It's a little bit... It's an easy thing to miss if you've never had that happen. Because usually, you know, in, in a PP attempt, if you get hit by a horn, it's over. Yeah. You, you, you get to one reset, you yeah, revive maybe, and then... But yeah, if you, if you miss both... Well, yeah, definitely should just go for safety strats now uh, for Giovanni here. Again, there is a... the standard strat for Giovanni is one seed and then setting up an X defense turn one, trying to just tank the earthquakes. But that bears the risk of getting crit by one earthquake and dying. So what Echi and Ergo now also did was go into it with both Rapidash and Starmie. The Rapidash should be taken up by the Earthquake, so it's basically still a 1v1. But you can hit the Duck Trio with Scald in the first turn, so you only have to tank the one Earthquake. Yeah, actually, unsurprisingly, also going for 2C Naomi here, considering he would probably have a pretty bad range on that Kangaskhan. Yeah, actually, just finishing this out. Yeah, as he should, really. There are no pots in uh, the upper bracket final, so doesn't Just matter. Winners. Just winners. Yeah. A win is a win in this round of the upper bracket. Well, same in the lower bracket. That is true, yes. Actually, no, that isn't true, right? You can still get pot 2 or pot 3. 
depending on your time for the next uh, pot for the next round. I mean. Yeah, but I mean, if you lose, you're you're out. So definitely, but I I meant like the three winners yeah, of the, the open record are not. Yeah. Uh, there's no difference between them really for the upper bracket final in round four. Yeah, and the question in chat about what happened to Hatbob. Hatbob was already behind these two um, in Pokemon Tower and hit an optional and was like, okay, I'm never going to win this game. So DNF. Yeah, and it's definitely and and sadly that And sadly that now forces Ergo today to finish running. Yeah, the DNF was... is definitely understandable and a respectable yeah, yeah. decision. The sad thing about that is that I feel like if Hedbop had kept playing and Ergote got this Giovanni gym, he probably would have been able to catch back up. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, win only winning counts here. Yeah, the winner gets to stay in the upper bracket, qualifies for the upper bracket final. Uh, Second and third place both get relegated to the loser's bracket, but second place is guaranteed to be pot one for the round four lower bracket draw, whereas the third place, only the fastest time will be in pot one. Yeah, I mean, if two more people in Upper Bracket now DNF, there will have to be a ruling uh, about... There, there is a ruling about that, but we're not going to announce it. Okay, okay. All right. It, it's good that there is so one, People though. won't try to game it in one way or another. Yeah, yeah. That is probably a good idea, actually. Getting a Lexus skip here, the last chain of skip of the run. Also Unless getting Kobe skip. skip. Yeah. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> I mean, w w without Edge, you would have we would have never like known about Colby skip. Yeah, because everybody was skipping him already. Ah, Jinx just. Uh... Missing the lovely kiss here, so actually gets yeah, the hydro pump. Yeah, this this Caroline fights another fight where he can lose a lot of time that like could have possibly gotten Ergo back into this race, but Yeah, we've seen Caroline decide at least two races in the upper bracket last round. Yeah. Where both the Etchy and versus Headstrong race was basically decided by Caroline and I think also the Ergotate Keypad race, right? Yeah. So last time Ergote benefited from Caroline, this time no such luck. Yeah, this time it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. This is some quality content for both of these runners. Yeah, actually just pushing a block, uh, <laughs> Ergote just getting the badges checked. Yeah, trying its best not to spam A and talking to Rapidash after. <laughs> Honestly, I just mash B in this, like on land. It's a little slower. I think you can also mash X, because I think X also counts as B. Uh, but yeah, on the water you can just smash A, though if you are standing too close to the guard on the water, you can accidentally talk to the guard again mm -hmm. if you mesh A. <laughs> so you have to have to be mindful of that as well. And actually now in the final fight of uh, Victory Road against Dawson, probably you will have to Psychic the Lickitung. I didn't see his special attack at 51, but special attack hasn't been too great so far. I guess we'll see.
No ghost was god, okay, so. Probably got an AV or two or just goes for a range here. Ergo Tail on the first fight of Pick 3 Road, actually on the last fight of Pick 3 Road. Yeah, and this is how quick it can go from like going being like one gym puzzle behind to. Yeah, basically the entirety of Victory Road behind now. Yeah, and I'm assuming actually we'll just two controller safety strats. Just finish. So we shouldn't see actually deposit the rapid dash here. Or if he does, he's also going to withdraw a Dorio. Take its place. No, just goes for the heal. Yeah, you can swap later if needed. Or you can just use Rapid Ash. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, that you can't do the uh, two controller Agatha. Yeah, but that is not the most necessary safety strat. Nor normally, no, but Ag Agatha is one of those fights that can just go wrong. It, it definitely can. Like, you can get defense dropped on the first crunch, and that can really. Uh, make the fight very inconsistent, but yeah, unless you oof, rotating another option on victory road, unless you get uh, hit back crunch or something right after, you should be fine even with a defense drop. Both uh, Lorelei and Bruno should be pretty routine fights for Edgy here. After the slow poke, uh, since he has two Pokemon in the party, the Onyx on Bruno is pretty likely to go for Stealth Rock instead of Earthquake. So there's really no danger to the star. Let's see what we get. It can still go for Earthquake. But it goes nope. for South Rock, yeah. Like I said, very likely to go for South Rock. Not guaranteed. Ooh. Oh. Okay, actually yeah. we'll get turned around some Bruno. Not that that will make a difference. No, again, this, this could be like something if things were slightly reversed. They're gonna take going for the two candy instead of three at the beginning. Would get turnarounds one fight later. Two two out of two Kobe skip. You'd love to see it. 
Yeah, 3 plus 1 candy set also usually gets turned on to Agatha. That is the total... well... Hmm. Yeah, it depends on the... also X item usage and such, but... Yeah, exactly, exactly. So... It's like way... it's 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 like way lower, like a, well, a bigger chance to get turned around earlier. More well, likely. I guess, I guess that is true. I don't know, I haven't gotten through the turnarounds in a minute, so... And I always go for 3 plus 1. No chance of a faint here for Etchy. Just taking out the Hitman Lee. That, that could be something for Ergote to go for. <laughs> true. Ah, oh, that is actually true. <laughs> you would have to refight Lorelei and uh, Bruno if he still wants to, you know. Or just save before. True, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Like, time wise, it doesn't matter. <laughs> kind of. I don't know. A little bit against the spirit of competition. But I guess that is something you could go for. Yeah, there also was a question about that, uh, ruling wise, and. Alright. And uh, like, uh, oh, can. If, if I'm losing anyway, can I just take 40 minutes to try to get faint for the, <laughs> the bounty? And uh, that was given a no. Yeah, understandably so. Has to happen naturally. Exactly. Was Ergo going for Dawson skip there? <laughs> I mean, I, I would have given it to him. Uh. <laughs> I feel like that's uh, an instant disqualification if you don't go back and talk to him. Yeah, where does, DQ, where does DQ rank versus DNF? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably even lower. So, suddenly uh, a lower, uh, lower bracket time slot uh, opens up. This, this sounds like a great plan. You should also go for that in your race trip. Great idea. Yeah. I'll just get an Aerodactyl and go for all four. No problem at all. Yeah, you don't, don't have the proper controller for it. it. Doesn't matter. Just go for it. Doing it for the content. Alright, well, actually not for Agatha. Uh, Ergo not picking up the photo star, so we'll go for to see Agatha. You are actually now on lands. I guess in 10 seconds on lands. Does save here. So will he go for 1C just to keep his stamina lower? You do always start the fight with one controller, even if you are going for the two controller safety strat. So we will only know. Yeah, the the, tur the turn off lag that you save is like worth it compared to like the summoning summoning out of a battle is faster than summoning in the battle. Yeah. But just the two controller add a lot of lag in this game. Yeah, the, the, I, I think the reason. Yeah, okay, looks like he's going for two controller because it doesn't set up an extra special defense here. Uh, the reason why you summon this Rapid Ash turn two is because you can't take out the Seed Rod turn one. Because it adds speed to the stamina without the X speed. But uh, if the Rapid Ash is already on the field, it could theoretically get Hydro Pump and just kill. So, uh, you want that one turn where Sammy sets up the X speed, so in turn two you then can go X special attack from the Rapid Dash on the Starmie and then just take out the uh, Cedra with the uh, with Psychic.
going back to Dawson's skip for a second. I honestly would love to see someone just go for it for the for like the style points and then turn back and fight him to you know not get disqualified. <laughs> I don't know if that would be allowed. You know, you're still fighting. It, 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 have... it, it would be allowed. Yeah. Like, may, may, I, I could see Sandy do that. Definitely a lot, yeah. Uh, I thought it would be, but... I think like, it would, it would be, be really funny. cool to, like, go up the stairs and then go back down. <laughs> like, so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so much if you go chat would go nuts. <laughs> like, oh, is he <laughs> skipping? He forget it. <laughs> yeah, if you go to Dustin's skip, you are on the rapid dash, so it is very easy to accidentally hit the ladder with a larger hitbox. So potentially, yeah, like, yeah, you would have to go back. Uh, yeah, pick, pick up the full restore, then go down the ladder. And... Two controller and saving. It really doesn't want anything to happen. Yeah, not like last time. I, I don't think anything can happen with two controllers. Apparently putting a pi price tag on their skipping skills in the chat right now. that link and uh, if you have the five dollars to spare <laughs> put them in because i really want to see it I, I was planning on donating like for every round that i made oh nice so it's a good idea i mean Sorry, i could I already donate for three rounds and if i make round four i'll donate again mm. I go down with Bruno, uh, actually now finishing up on champ. Rapidash didn't die, so it's slightly slower here to get through the fight. I stood down instead of using Rapidash for champ. It's less likely to die to uh, the Pidgeot than, say, Dojo or one of the low level Pokemon that you could potentially put in for the fight. Yes, like a Trent Marowak. No chance of survival today. And that's GG for Etchy. Looks like uh, it's going to be a high 303 here. Just mashing through the last set of dialogue where. Ergate is not finishing up. Agatha, so two more fights for him. Really unfortunate turn for him in this race.
but he's doing his best. Right. <laughs> Seems like we now have that uh, money secured for the <laughs> Dawson skip, yeah. swag skip. And, and more than. <laughs> Amazing, thank you. Alright, 3056 for Edgy in race time. Let's see if he wants to join the call. Yeah, maybe take a bit. A moment to breathe after not playing the game for two weeks. Yeah, he has to turn off his hacks and such. <laughs> Probably gonna go for a quick round of TCG to to wind down. Hey. Ah, oh, there you are. Hi, GG is Edgy. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. GG. So yeah. yeah, tell us about the run. That was alright. <laughs> um, yeah, I just had like a lot of breakouts and, and a really slow route 10. And then just like, everything else was like mediocre. Like nothing nothing like really good happened during the run. I got a, sh I got a, I got a Shancy, but it broke out. I shouldn't have skipped the Clefable on that moon. That was, that was really bad decision making by me. I really needed it. Um, Would have saved me a couple turns. Because even, even though I did get good experience because of the Onyx, um, yeah, the minus attack thing, I was still like a little bit, I, like I, I had like one stat point behind neutral attack for like a lot of Mount Moon, which caused problems. But uh, later in the run, it didn't matter. My attack was, was totally fine thanks to being plus attack characteristic. So um, yeah, it was a pretty okay run. I, I, I don't really have any big problems with it. I just got really unlucky with a lot of breakouts and um, Route 10 being really bad too. And Archer, forgot about Archer. Yeah, yeah the five turn. Did, did you follow anything like the, the other runners where they were? Yeah, yeah. I um, I, I didn't see what happened to Head Bob until like after the fact. And uh, I know Ergo was like super close with me for a lot of like, for like the first half of the run. Uh, we were we were pretty close. Like there were a lot of times we were synced up, but like the catch counts were yeah. slightly different. Yeah. Um, so I was I was pretty worried, and I was like trying to yeah. stay locked in, but the catches weren't cooperating with me. So yeah, like great. <laughs> it, it was like the Sabrina gym puzzle and the evolution behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, I just got super unlucky with the the input on the the Blaine gym fight, and uh, I think he, he uh, Ergo also hit the optional on Vermilion too, right? Yep. Yeah, he hit the yeah. Vermilion skip, the one on the quiz, and then he missed title pump twice on Samuel. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that one, I, that one I saw. Yeah, and, that... and K K Kaden was was awful. Really? To, yeah, he, he got, uh, I think he got Toxic into Minimize into Moonblast into Protect. God. And then he hit the Psychic turn 5, but that was a really rough Caden too. And then the Geo fights, yeah. Or the Geo Gym. Yeah. The right, yeah, the entire gym, yeah. He, he skipped Brutal. the trainer. Yeah, I said I don't. So I didn't see that section. What do you What are you supposed to do when you like? What do you do? You just go to the left. To the left, yeah. So after like the, I keep forgetting the trainer class name. The tamer. Can, tamer. The tamer just moves up one tile basically. So you can, mm -hmm. if you go to the tamer, you can just go onto the blue spinner pad oh. right behind him. So you don't even have okay. to go to Samuel. Gotcha, you gotcha. I uh, that is good to know for the future. <laughs> yeah. Just the, I think that it is to make it easier for you to reach the center of the gym casually. Mm -hmm. But in a speedrun, it does kind of feel like a trap. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, Ergo doing the uh, safe champ fight here as well, doing the Dodrio stuff yeah. just to, to finish and get out of here because uh, the seating will matter. So. Yeah, he just has to get a time. Yeah, literally any time. Yeah. How, how how did the de-resting go for you? Did you feel any <laughs> rest for the run or? Uh, not really. I, I didn't feel like rest was the problem during the run. The, the problem was more so just getting kind of unlucky in a few. Like, 
I, I didn't have any problems with like getting Pokemon. They just spawned in like the worst order and kind of slowly. So I, I just got slowed down a lot by like random stuff. Like that. I'm, and I'm glad if I was ever going to get a, a minus attack run in the tournament, I hope this is the only one. I hope this is me using up that RNG because this was probably the best minus attack feature you could get. Yeah, you had a lot of attack uh, APs. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was like it kept going back and forth basically when they were applied in an early game, but I'd be like slightly below the normal attack and then the next level I'd be like exactly matching neutral attack because I've got an AV and then I'd go like back and forth and it, it was really weird but uh <laughs> at least it got through things it, it just missed like some dumb ranges because of the bad attack but nothing nothing too bad like the misty thing was was fine too Miss, missing the misty range yeah and, and all of those things I think you were like it, it really was like close between you and Ergo for a little, little yeah. bit. Yeah. I think you were just like, you were you were slightly less unlucky. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was really scary. I, I, I was a little worried. I was I was worried that um, uh, I, like in general with these races, my my strategy is kind of just to not really pay too much attention to where everybody is for the first like hour and a half, two hours. Because you really don't have to like play safe or do anything like different. You can you can basically play your normal game. It's just late game where you have to really start considering safety strats and stuff so trying just not to think about it because I, I knew we were ahead and every time i checked back i was like or i knew we were uh, pretty close to even so every time i checked back i was like oh geez he's super close uh but i just tried not to think about it yeah that's probably the best strategy for the first two hours or so yeah yeah, yeah for sure and ergo also finishing up here Yeah, just beyond 310 here, th low 311 probably on the timer. Uh, I do have to hop off the call now, but um, all right. Thank you for commentating, GGs to Ergo. I, I can wait till Ergo cops in, then I'll hop off right after. But yeah, thank I you do. and uh, good luck in your uh, in your winner's final, uh, like upper, the, the first like final of the upper bracket. It's already it's already the winner's final. What the heck? Yeah. That was so fast. We One just started race. this tournament. <laughs> it flies by. <laughs> Who do you want to face? Who do I want to face? No, uh... People in the loser's <laughs> bracket? I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know what I am excited for is the, uh, the Etiquette Headstrong Dynam race later. Yeah, that's going to be a high that's race. That's going to be good. It's really funny that they matched up again. Um. All right. Looks like yeah, we're we joined by Ergate now. GG. GG's Ergate. I got up off the GG. GG's. Yeah. I don't... Uh, I'll just forget that happened, I guess. Yeah, that was yeah. a rough run. But GG and uh, for sticking it out to the end, you know. Yeah. Luckily, it fell apart only, like at the end, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, I, I felt like I could see you playing with a bit of frustration. Yeah. I mean, I was tryharding until I missed twice on Samuel, and then it was just like, I can't really bring myself to care, like, let's just play this out. Yeah. Because, like, time doesn't matter, so it was just, yeah, I don't know. Uh, did, you, did you follow the run at all, like, where the other runners were? Uh, I was, uh, like watching evolution screens and stuff from my phone but i mean i have the chat open so i could kind of tell where etchy was at times but yeah like, i don't have yeah, screen but... space to like keep a stream open on my computer so just just the phone once in a while yeah you you were like slightly behind i would say to etchy yeah, I think I like, was a minute behind leaving Brock because forest sucked, and then it was kind of like can't yeah, you're... up un until unless something really bad happens to it. <laughs> yeah, like two, two early breakouts. Yeah. Oh well, happens. And then, like you, yeah, like I said, you were like really close. So, like, I mean, you hit an actual optional, uh, the familiar yeah. skip. That that didn't cost too much time, I would say. 
That was pretty my quick fight. Blaine, I will blame on controller though. So I definitely input down there. Well, oh, well. You do luckily get one more chance in the tournament. Mm -hmm. You're not out yet. We'll be going to yep. the to the losers bracket or to the lower bracket more accurately in the next round. Is there any matchup you would look forward to down there? I mean, depends, I guess, who falls from upper, first of all. Like, if, say, Tibet falls down there, that would be a hype rematch. True. I mean, we'll see. Well, I mean, in theory, you, you could just match up against Headbop again next next round. I could. I uh, could. Now, after that, uh, DNF out of Headbop. Whatever happened to him, anyway? He yeah, was absolutely. behind. Yeah, he yeah. was already behind, like basically the entire run. Um, and then hit an optional in tower, uh, and was like, "Okay, I I can't win this anymore." So, yeah. And it, it, ironically, like if 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 he continued, he could have probably beaten you with how things would would go for you. Yeah, and and I then mean, you would have DNF. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have played as risky if we were close with that Bob. So I don't know. Yeah, but Hatbop was like like three or four minutes behind in tower already. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense to forfeit then. Yeah. All right, well, Argate, do you have any final words here before we uh, wrap up the stream? Well, I mean, GG to Edgy. But like, yeah, I'll just forget this happened and play better in the next round. Well, I for one look forward to seeing your performance in the next round. All right. Well, before we go, let's uh, let's take a look at the upcoming races here because uh, this was only the first out of three runs today. We have another one coming up at five thirty Eastern time uh, between Dynam Etiquette and Headstrong Twelve Ninety. That is the next upper bracket range, and it is it is going to be. A banger, I'm pretty sure. Uh, all three of them are, or they're, they're, they're around two times, or just 31 seconds apart. And it's also a rematch between Etiquette and Headstrong in round two, where really only Caroline decided who won the race in the end. So uh, you don't want to miss that race. Uh, and that's also not the last one, because happening a little under two hours later, over at PSR TV 2, we have our first lower bracket race of the round between Sandy Beach, Quo, and Razor's Edge. And there you do have to look forward to the Dawson skip now, potentially. <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah. going to be... Uh... Also, like, uh, th this could be an interesting race. Sandy Beach is the favorite, but Quo and Razor are fast as well. Absolutely. I feel like we are getting to a point in the tournament where you really can count no one out of their race at any given point. Uh, well, any given point leading up to the race. So, uh, and also, of course, two players will be eliminated from that. It is a lower bracket race. So two of those players will have to pack things up here after today. And then there's one more race left another lower bracket race tomorrow on the schedule that is there there are more races left if you tap uh, exclamation mark schedule in the chat uh we will have CJ versus furists uh not quite sure what happened to the third racer there i think leggy uh, starscream dropped all right so it will just be two person race but it that is a very interesting race still because CJ is the one who got relegated from the upper bracket. But Furious, who com who's coming from the lower bracket, actually had a better time in round two than Side J. So and they were like 20 seconds apart. That is a race that is going to be very intense. Yeah, well. we, saw that, we saw that a lot with like lower bracket times being fast. Yeah, absolutely. 
So again, don't want to miss that. That will be happening tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern time on this very channel. Yeah, and there's plenty of more races uh, in the weekend. I think we have three on Saturday. Including one on mine. Sunday. <laughs> that is I, I, have to, I have to send a race and then the last one is on Monday. True, true. There's one more left after that. All right. I think that is going to be it for us today. Make sure that you follow this channel and also Peace RTV2 to not miss any of the races in this round. Again, I feel like every race is going to be a banger. Uh, but anyway, until next time, thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great round three week. Bye.